Michael? Zoning Board of Appeal hearing for, for September 13, 2022 is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until March 2023. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means that you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists, and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the host sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself again after you receive the request from the host. Again, if you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand and star six to unmute yourself. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide the comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. I will request that as soon as you've put your comments in the record, 
please lower your hands so that the meeting host knows that you have had your, uh, your chance to have your say. Also, I will request that if there are, uh, if you are uh, speaking and if somebody else has already stated your reason for support or opposition, please just state that you're in support or in opposition and put your name and address on the record. Use your time to give us new information. Before we proceed, I'd like to thank um, Coast Coast Ligris for his service on this board as a representative of the uh, real estate board. He has tended his resignation as um, he has um, um, other, other pressures on his time. So we thank him very much for his, um, his role and his uh, thoughts as we uh, move through a number of cases especially in the hard times where we went to um, remote. Before we begin, uh, let me take a roll call. Mr. Fortune. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. Ruggiero. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. Olek. Here. Ms. Dong. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. Robinson. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Hampton from the BPDA. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, uh, Mr. D'Amico from BTD. Okay, uh, Mr. Fortune, the chair, the Thank you, Madam Chair. The first order of business is the approval of the hearing minutes of July 26, 2022. Motion to approve. Second. All, um, Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Around is also in support, so motion carries. Call the first extension, calling DOA 836 636 603 Dorchester Ave. Name and address for the record, please. There, Mr. Meyer on. Is someone on for 603 Dorchester Ave? Paul. Let me see Paul Bocard. I know. Let's see if he's on here. I know Paul is in a butter. Um, Stephen Meyer, I don't see the attorney. Let's move on, please. Following the next case for extension, calling DOA 905 438 64 Nelson Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Kevin Cloutier from the Cloutier Law Firm with the business address of 199 Center Street in West Roxbury. Thank you, Mr. Cloutier. Regarding 64 Nelson Street, the board originally granted this relief on October 11, 2019, and it granted the first extension of relief until October 11, 2022. However, that extension was unnecessary. With tolling, this relief remains valid until January 16, 2023. The applicant now requests a further extension until October 11, 2023. I recommend that the board grant this extension if it finds it appropriate under the circumstances, keeping in mind that it would be the applicant's first necessary extension. I'll, I'll make a motion to extend until October 11, 2023, and that's inclusive of all applicable tolling. Second. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo also in support, so motion carries. We request that the applicant do make their best efforts to proceed with the project. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Madam Chair, we do have three raised hands. I don't know if this is in regards to 603 Dorchester Ave, but we can find that out. Yeah, I just sent them chats. Um, Joseph, I just sent you a chat. I'm not sure if you're receiving them. And Paul? Paul? Hello, this is Joe, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, Francis, so my, uh, my chat is disabled, so I can't answer you. Okay. Are you here to present on the case? 
Hi, Francis. I will be at some point. Hi, Francis. This is this is Paul. This is Paul Sullivan, from Council Clary's office. I just, I just need the applicant, please. If we do not have the applicant on, let's move to the next project, please. Madam Chair, what would you like me to do? Would you like me to read it to the record or no? Let's just move on to the next one. Can you hear right. me? Yep. Calling board okay. final. Calling board final auditor. Calling DOA 126 0823 76 Wyman Street. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, name and address for the record, please. Sure, my name is Sarah Ewing and I'm the owner of 76 Wyman Street, so Unit 1. Us, so, um, Ms. Ewing, tell us why you're here. Sure, so on May 24th of this year, I came before the board where a decision was made to grant um, my application for a relocation of a curb cut, as well as a construction of a parking pad to the left of my house. That was with the note that I would work with BTD to quote, limit impact to the street. And from my understanding of the conversation, that meant to ensure that I removed the old curb cut on my property did um, before. You, did you speak to the BTD? So I did, I reached out and uh, received an email back from Bob D'Amico, apologies if I'm misconstruing his name, um, that he did not agree with the project and when I explained that this was to simply work with him, that the, the board approved the project, and this uh, conversation was to simply work with him to limit impact to the street, I never received a response back from him, and therefore reached back out to Stephanie here at the board to understand what my next steps were, and she said I needed to come back to the board for a final decision to perhaps remove that note or to work further with you for a better solution. Um, uh, let's see, uh, is Mr. D'Amico on? Um, Mr. Uh, Hampton. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. I, I don't know anything about this case. I'm looking through my notes now just to see if there's anything else. Um, um, I, I know, I, Mr. Yeah, I, I know can jump in, too, if we, if we need to. So can I, I, reviewed the, I reviewed the case. It was heard. It was approved. Um, it is for a um, closure of an existing curb cut that leads to nowhere. The opening of a new one that would be combined, I guess, with the neighbor um, property that also has a parking pad on their um, right-hand side. Uh, Mr. D'Amico's comments were, you know, that we're private. This is privatizing a parking spot, and. Um, no one parks in, or you're allowed to park in front of a curb cut to nowhere anyways. Um, Francis, this is Joe. Help. So, you know, I think it's one of these cases Good. where so with counselor. we're not exact. I mean, I no, can understand I, where it's falling in between the cracks. Yeah, I mean, the notes that I have, Madam Chair, is that the board considers this that it was a wash. It was a one-to-one -one replacement. Yeah. So, I no, I, I just want to make sure that when the board puts in provisos for, for it, for action by either B BTD or the BPDA that there is follow-up and that it doesn't end up in um, a, you know, a black hole. So may I request that the BTD, um, because um, um, that the BTD follow up with Ms. Ewing um, to bring closure to this? May I have a motion, please? Uh, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... I'm going to make a motion to remove the proviso. No, I I want to make sure that in fact when B, B, when the board of appeal this is this is an important thing that um, the um, the that the staff doesn't uh, just do what they need to do. That in fact I oh I, I I agree I agree, but the applicant is also getting caught in the middle of this, and I don't. Yes, that. and that's why I'd like to have it into the BPD's, BPDA's hand to bring it to closure um, swiftly. Okay, I'll make, I'll, make, I'll make a motion to um, but remove the BTD proviso and make it a BPDA proviso. Exactly, exactly. And, and, yep. and Jeff, please make sure that, um, you know, and it, is there a second? I'll second that, Eric. Okay, Fortune? Yes. Ruggiero? Yep. Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. 
around Joe's also in support. So motion carries. Sorry for this runaround, Ms. Ms. Ewing, but um, you know we just want to make sure that in the long run you are protected. Um, so let's move on. Good luck. Thank you, everyone. Call the next board final arbiter calling EOA 126 to 18 Cheney Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning. I'm Kendra Halliwell with Icon Architecture. I live at 21 Lee Street in Jamaica Plain. I'm the architect working with JPNDC on 4 to 18 Cheney Street. Is there a representative from JPNDC on, on this call, on this meeting? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair. Ricky Guetta from JPNDC and Rebecca Cloud Mountner, Director of Real Estate at JPNDC. Business address 81 Germania Street, Jamaica Plain. Okay, um, so I have I have a note to mention to the JPNDC, please to, to request that you please do not bring projects to us unless they're fully vetted. Um, we have a long list of applicants waiting to be on the agenda. And this is, what is it, the fourth time that you've appeared with this set of projects, and we anticipate that you will be on a fifth time or something like that. And this is very time consuming for us as a board. So bring your projects when you have more completely worked them through. Um, this is not a test run when you come to us. You know, so I will, um, I have to put this out to you, both on your projects in JP and then this project in Roxbury. So, and especially when you're proposing a subdivision, the board standard operating procedure is to look at the subdivision in totality and not just half or a portion of it, okay? So just to put you on notice that this, this is not, not the way we like to see business done. However, on this one, did I understand that there are minor changes on 4 to 8 Cheney Street? So please walk through and tell us what those minor changes are. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Uh, we've made a few improvements. We have reduced the unit count from 59 down to 48 units. We also pushed the building back from the street uh, by approximate to approximately 40 feet back from the street, creating a front yard area for the residents to use. We've also widened the sidewalk as part of the, the base project. And we've also shifted the entry driveway, which used to come in on the front of the building. We pushed that to the downhill side of the building, thus also creating a greater front yard. So in sum, there is less relief requested. Uh, the relief that is requested is an increase to the front yard setback, um, which does call for uh, building face alignment. And as you can see, we pushed it back significantly to create this open space in working with the community through discussions. And then additionally, by reducing the units, we have also reduced the FAR, but we still request relief on FAR, so those are the two areas we're looking for. So, uh, tell me about the entry driveway. Was it wasn't it on the other side of the building? It was. Um, uh, it was on the. Uh, it was right where it says landscaped gardens. The driveway came right in the front okay. of the building there, and so now we've pushed it down, and then it turns and comes in the side. So we don't have a garage door in the front of the building anymore. And it looks like there's a curb cut, um, and then there's a short, a short sidewalk, and then another curb cut. Is that right? Uh, yes, yes. There's an existing curb cut just below, um, uh, at the bottom of the page here. Yes. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion for approval with design review? I'll make a motion to approve with the BPDA design review. Second. Fortune. Aye. Mujiro? Aye. Olick? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo also in support, so motion carries. Calling the next case of building code, case BLA 136-4200, four dot in place. This is construction of a new roof deck on a single family residence. 
the violation of 9th edition 780 CMR 1011, the stairway, 1011.12.2, roof access through a tent house. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, good morning. It's Michelle Hedegar, and the address is for Dartmouth Place. But tell us what you're proposing to do. So uh, I'm here as well as is Carl Hedegar, I'm the licensed construction supervisor and homeowner. And essentially the code is for a head house above a staircase. And what we have in its place is a fully compliant staircase with a mechanical hatch that lifts up and provides um, unimpeded passage to the roof deck. And it's direct, and this is um, directly out of your unit? Correct. And how many units in the building? It's a single family. Oh, sorry, single family, of course. Uh, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good, very straightforward, as, exactly as he says, no comments, questions. Okay, um, and is it visible? For, uh, no, I guess it's okay. Proposed roof deck, is it visible from the street? It is not visible from the street. Okay, uh, may I have a motion, please? I'll motion make a motion to approve. Second. Fortune? Aye. Rishiro? Aye. Olick? Aye. Dong? Robinson. Aye. Aroujo also in support, so motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, before we go to the 930, we're going to go back to that extension. Sure. Calling case DOA 836 636 603 Dorchester Avenue. Name and address for the record. Oh. Paul? Just I don't see Stephen Meyer over here. Okay, let's make a motion to postpone it to the next uh, hearing. Motion um, to the next full board meeting. Can you hear me now? This is Paul uh, Perry um, oh. from uh, Reuben and Rudman on behalf of Steve Meyer. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Put your, oh, you got your name and address on the record? Uh, Madam Chair, I'll take my motion back. Okay, thank uh, you. Uh, thank you. Hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Uh, Attorney Paul Bakari from Ruben and Redmond at 53 State Street in Boston. Uh, on behalf of Steve Meyer, who's out of the country, who just asked me to uh, sub in for him at the hearing I had. Enormous. So hold on, hold on, sir. Thank Go you, ahead. Thank you, sir. Regarding 603 Dorchester Ave, the board originally granted this relief on August 23rd, 2018, and it granted a two year extension of that relief until August 23rd, 2020, 2022. With tolling, this relief would have expired on November 18, 2021, so the prior extension encompassed all tolling. I recommend that the board confirm for this record that the grant the applicant's second request for extension if it finds it appropriate under the circumstances. And this, and I'm sorry, Mr. Fortune, what, until what date? Uh, sorry, Madam Chair. So be, uh, I would believe, August 23rd of 2023. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Uh, motion to approve. Um, motion to August. What was that date again? August 23rd of 2023. Motion to extend until August 23rd of 2023. That includes all applicable toll. Second. Second. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Olick? Aye. Dong. Aye. Robinson. Araujo is also in support. Sorry, Robinson is aye. Sorry. Okay. So motion motion is approved. Please make sure, uh, Councillor, that this project continues to move um, at move into construction. Thank you. I'm going to call the 930 hearings. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals for 930? Give me the address first, please. 14 Gardner Street. Thank you, Councillor. Ward 21. I'm sorry, say that? It was Ward 21, just if it makes it easy to find it. So on page five of the agenda, Mr. Fortune at the bottom. I'm 14 Gardner, okay, I'm sorry. Regarding the case BOA 136 7246 14 Gardner. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago in Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. We are seeking a deferral for a uh, full board. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. 
Second. Mr. Second. Fortune. Aye. Ruggiero. Aye. Alec. Aye. Dong. Aye. Robinson. Aye. Araujo is also in support. The date, please. I believe we'll have a full board on October 25th. Thank you. Okay. 1130. Okay, and, and thank you for reminding me, Councillor. Um, this Today we have a six member board and um, you need five, any applications um, need five members to be in support of, uh, of the project for it to carry. Thus you are entitled to an administrative deferral should you wish to choose that. That may change the, um, the, the number of deferrals we have, but I um, so go ahead, um, anybody else who's here requesting a deferral? Any deferrals or withdrawals to the 930, if you give me the address correctly. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, 273 Maverick along with 279 Maverick, please. Thank you, Councilor. We got a case VOA 114 273 Maverick Street. There's a companion case VOA 114 275 to 279 Maverick Street. Name and address for the record. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Lins, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston. On behalf of the petitioner, uh, Madam Chair, I believe we need to re-notice this matter based on conversations with uh, board staff. Uh, we're hoping for a date of October 25th based upon our conversations. May I have a motion, please, for deferral? Motion to defer. Second. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson. Aye. Araujo is also in support, so motion for deferral carries. The date, please. And you do have a date of uh, October 25th at 11.30. Thank you. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 9.30 case? Okay. Hearing none, I'll call the first case, calling DOA 128-9450, 36 Colburn Road. This is a constructing new multifamily 11 residential unit, common roof deck, and ground level parking for nine vehicles. Violation of Article 51, Section 9, sufficient lot size. Article 51, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 51, Section 9, the number of allowed stories has been exceeded by two and a half, max. Article 51, Section 9, insufficient side guard setback. Article 51, Section 9, insufficient rear guard setback. Article 51, Section 9, maximum height has been exceeded. Article 51, Section 9, insufficient front yard setback. Article 51, Section 53, screening and buffering. Article 51, Section 8, use and regulations. 11 unit is within Article 51, Section 56, insufficient parking. Give me an address for the record, please. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney John Fulgini, uh, business address at 10 Forbes Road, um, together with uh, Josh Betterman and Eric Zacherson, who's the, the uh, development architect. Um, the 36 Colburn Road in Brighton, Brighton, the zoning is two family 5,000, lot size is 6,863 square feet. This proposal is to raise the existing building and construct a new 11 unit condominium building with a common roof deck and nine off street parking spaces internal to the building. The internal parking will be accessed by a curb cut on Colburn Road that will travel to the rear of the building and access the internal parking. Um, hold on, hold on, Mr. Polgini. Can you tell us uh, what page we should be looking at to understand the scope of the project? Um, so this is what the, obviously there's a colored elevation that you're looking at right now. If you go to the second page, it will have the um, site plans and floor plans. Uh, there's the uh, basement parking floor plan. Mr. Robinson, the site, Mr. Robinson, help us and tell us which is the best plan to be looking at. Um, I, you know, I think the plan. Eric Zacherson's on the call. Yeah. Eric, if you could comment on this. Well, Mr. Zacherson, let's go, let's move, okay? All right. Uh, I was trying to become a panelist. Um, the question is, what is the, the appropriate site plan? What's what's the right page to look at to understand how the how the building works on the site? Okay, uh, again, this one right here. At the, uh, at the top of the page, you've got Colborne Road, and on the right side, you've got Euston Road. On Euston, you would uh, enter a one-way uh, path that would come along the back uh, of the site. All the parking would be open to the rear, and uh, there would be a, an exit, on, a one-way exit onto Colborne Road. 
um, and on this floor you would have uh, the uh, the parking the nine parking spaces uh, and the lobby the bike room and the trash and recycling so tell us how uh, you're proposing screening and buffering on the site and tell us how it works in context of the neighborhood because this is a two out five thousand district correct and, and on the uh, and on the Mr. Cole, Jeannie, uh, you um you should jump in as Absolutely. appropriate sure um if uh, if eric you would just want to start with the screening and buffering i'll get into the whole context of this building yeah we've agreed to have a, a privacy fence along the uh two to two side two kind of side yards or, or rear yards uh, off of colborne but uh, along the front of the the building we'd have uh, landscaping which you can kind of see in the rendering here with uh, a mix of planters and, and, and some green space but the buffering along the back of the building would be a six foot tall privacy fence okay any trees proposed for the site I mean we keep talking on one side about climate change etc cetera, etc cetera, and then we keep um, you know putting up you know uh, we do a light touch on the screening and buffering there, there is not space for a tree at that tree or anything, anything more uh, substantial. Okay, and tell us about the the roof deck. So the roof deck is a common roof deck, Madam Chair. Um, it is accessed by a stairway as well as a lift. Okay, and it's by a separate hatch. Is that what I'm seeing here? I mean, a, a separate um, penthouse. Penthouse. Head Yes. Yes, Madam yes. Chair. And there's no possibility of having that penthouse attached to something else. So one of the the common roof deck is required to have two egg, two means of egress, and so one of them is connected to the elevator head house, and the other is connect would be um, freestanding. So one's connected to the um, stairwell, the one one to the elevator. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, and then tell us about the units, how they break down. Sure, Madam Chair. On the ground floor, I'll just start there. There's no living space. It is parking in a bike room. On the uh, first floor, uh, overall, we have five three-bedroom, two-bath units with an average size of 1,030 square feet, four two-beds, two-bath with an average of 827 square feet, and there are two studios with one bath averaging 455 square feet. Okay. And I will just touch, because you did bring it up, Madam Chair, a very good question. Um, although this is located in the two-family district, if you look on your tablets there, you'll see that this proposal is surrounded by a mix of buildings, including many very large multifamily residential buildings. Additionally, it's... Yes. Uh, two, I, know, I know it abuts on an MFR district, yes. so, yeah. And it's also 200 feet from the uh, B trolley station. Okay. Um, so did you say it was three bedrooms, three baths? Uh, three bedrooms, two baths, Madam Chair. Two baths. Okay, got it. And if um, I may, I, uh -huh. I just would like to just talk a little bit about this. So through the community process, originally this was an apartment. Um, it was changed uh, for, to home ownership, and we will provide a large three-bedroom, family-style, affordable unit, condominium unit, together with a financial contribution to the city's affordable housing fund. Uh, also, we will be eliminating there's a huge curb cut that you could probably see on the existing condition plan. That will be closed up and we'll limit it to a 10 foot curb cut for access. Okay. And can you talk, tell us why there is, why you're proposing to give to the fund rather than provide any additional affordable units in, in uh, Brighton? So it, it would be normally in a situation like this, it would be uh, because of the, the mix of units, it would be a uh, two bedroom unit. So through the community process, we decided to give the larger family style unit because that's what the community asked for. Mm -hmm. So there is the affordable unit that we, the condominium unit that we're giving. In addition to that, we will give a financial contribution to the IDP fund. And do we know what the number is of that unit? Um, the the um, specific, whatever it looks like on the plans currently? Yeah, well, it's, it will be the large three beds. So it, it would be um, over a thousand square feet, three bed, two bath. But which unit is it? Because we would like to memorialize that. Unit eight. Better. Unit four, or unit eight, I believe. One of the. Well, just, well, will, the you, will you bring clarification to the um, 
ZBA staff so that it can be put into the record. Absolutely, Madam Chair. Um, let's see. How, uh, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Um, the plans are fine. Uh, you know, I, I guess I have some questions about the size and density of this project as it sits in its current location. It is on a street with other bigger buildings, I will agree, but it also is a corner condition that is linked and also has a hill on the side street that doesn't appear to be accounted for in the drawings. If you go to the elevations, there's basically a 15 foot brick wall that runs along the entire site on both sides. And I guess I'm just a little confused on um, that sort of approach for this somewhat residential neighborhood. Um, and then I do have a question on the roof deck. The roof deck's only a thousand square feet, so you could eliminate a head house and reduce that, I mean, to below 49 occupants, and you could get rid of the roof, ha or roof um, hatch, or, or uh, sorry, roof head house at, that is on the street, which is also exacerbating its size. So I'd be interested to hear a little bit about that, and then I guess I'd also like to hear a little bit from the BPA on their position on this. Can I hear from the applicant first? Eric, do you want to speak to the roof deck and the possible we, we could uh, we could reduce the size of the roof deck, the common roof deck, and eliminate the, the head house as was requested. It was not one of the major points of contention during the discussion with the neighbors, and um, so uh, we kind of we've drawn this and, and had not had had not had that be a request, but we could certainly uh, look at that and yes. do that if that was. Yes. So we would accept, accept hold, on, hold on, this team has come to this board often enough to know about this board's position on roof, to, on on penthouses. So um, please, you know, try and uh, forestall any questions and issues we may have with this by uh, addressing it ahead of time. Go ahead. Can you go ahead and address the rest of the questions of Mr. Robinson's questions? Regarding the, the density? I think yeah, it was regarding a, a wall that was around wall. The wall, the density, um, the, the context, the, the context. Uh, as uh, was mentioned, the, the rear wall, we don't uh, feel is going to be terribly visible um, it's going to be open to the to the parking spaces. There is uh, along the front. There is a, a wall, but we're planning to have a landscape in that zone between ourselves and the property line. Um, and we have a landscape plan, which may or may not have been included, but includes planters and green space. Um, there is a landscape plan. If you scroll down, um, Madam, there is a. Uh, yeah, a I, I know. Uh, the question is okay. So. What's the rear yard that's required, and what are you proposing? So the rear yard's 30 uh, foot requirement. We're at 13 feet, four inches. Okay, so that Mr. Robinson may give you some sense because I'm with you that it's um, it is kind of creating this this barrier and impacting the abutters, um, you know, negatively because of the height of the building. Well, I I think it's I mean the hill I'm. I'm not as worried actually about the rear because it does slope up. I understand that. I'm just, this street presence uh, does not seem to be conducive with, and I understand screening the parking, but um, I guess I would hope that it would be a little bit more knitted in into the corner into its relationship. And that's certainly something we could put to the BPDA on a, a proviso, but um, I think there's some work here. And I guess the BPA is recommending approval with um, design review, which if that's, okay then i think we can do that but i think there needs to be some real work done on this to make it actually fit within the context of the neighborhood so any other questions from the board um is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal afternoon uh, good morning madam chair frank mendoza also bright liaison mayor's office of neighborhood services here uh, to report on the community engagement process the applicant had an abutters meeting in march uh, where no major concerns were expressed they obtained the support of the brighton austin improvement association uh, and we have uh, on file for them five letters of support one letter of opposition the letter of opposition from a member of the broader community and not a butter thank you very much and at this time i'd like to defer to the judgment of the board 
Good morning, this is Maura McCray from Councilor Breeden's office. The Councilor would like to go on record in support of this project with the understanding that this is a condominium project with one IDP in it. If possible, the Councilor would also like to request BPDA design review. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have a few letters of support, a couple of letters of opposition. Madam Chair, I have five raised hands. Can we start off with Annabelle Gomes, please? Please. Yes. Annabelle, you've been unmuted. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, members of board, Annabelle Gomes from the Brighton Loss and Improvement Association. The BIA voted to support this project uh, with BPDA design review. Annabelle, is this the street that Mary Talty used to live on? Um, no, I think she lived off of the street on one of the little side streets. I don't think she actually lived yeah, on Yeah, th I thought she had a cold one address. Okay. Um, okay. Um, go ahead, Ms. Ambassador. Let's, let's take um, the other raised hands. Okay. Jenna, you've been unmuted. Good Can morning. Can you your name and address for the record, please? Hi, Madam Chair. My name is Jenna Lau. I live at 38 Colburn Road, so I am an abutter, a neighbor, and I oppose to the building of this um, building. What is your opposition based on? My opposition is based on most of the houses on our current block are two families, and this is a very big building if it was to be constructed for it and there is parking already um, situation on the parking street where condos are taking up parking spots so with this building is additional fighting over spaces and there will be more people within our current block for it thank you all right jordan abrams you've been unmuted if you can state your name and address for the record please Yes, hello, Jordan Abrams uh, for Ransom Road, just across the street from the project uh, in support and appreciate the addition of some affordable housing and appreciate- uh, just, just note that there's one affordable unit. So um, this is a note for anybody else who wants to make a comment, um, you know, that these, the rest will be market. Thank you. Uh, thank you. My Lord. You've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Ambassador. Madam Chair, members of the board, my number is representing the Carpenters Union. would like to go on record in support of this project. Okay. Andy, you've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning. My name is Andy Bauer. I live at um, 72 Houston around the corner. I've lived there for years. Um, Parking has been brought up a little bit. I wanted to mention my building has a parking lot and it's never full. Um, I take the T, part of the reason why I live right there, um, close to the T. I think that building could use some sprucing up as well, may, may make the neighborhood look a lot better. Um, and of course, although it's only one. I, um, I assume you're in support? Yes, in support, okay, thank you. thank you. All right, one more. Peter, you've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, uh, I'm Herbert Yee. I'm actually speaking on behalf of Peter yeah. um, son. I also reside in the building next to uh, the proposed construction, 50 Houston Road. Um, uh, definitely concerned about the, uh, the, the parking situation. Um, and obviously, it's being built uh, directly because uh, we share a border. So it's built right directly next to us. Uh, the initial construction is definitely a major concern. Uh, so I, I do have two, two young children uh, that play in the backyard, front yard, uh, and then also for the future, um, you know, residents that will be moving in, um, there's definitely noise, uh, noise, noise concerns, traffic. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, oh, may I hear from uh, Jeff Hampton, please? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. We did recommend approval with design review. Uh, Mr. Robinson, we echo your concerns on the wall going up the hill. Uh, I'm sure that we can have uh, some significant design review on that to soften it. And we also uh, want to focus on some usable open space, uh, especially being the corner lot. So we are on the record as uh, in support of this project. Thank you. So um, I just wanted to, to just uh, find out, Mr. Hampton, that the that the, given the fact that this is a two hundred five thousand, and there are a number, it, it is for this side of the street, um, two and three family, 
um, that the BPDA has no issue with going with an 11 story building with 11 unit building with all these violations? That's correct, Madam Chair. Okay, okay. Um, so we've heard from everybody. Um, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve, um, but I do think it needs significant BPDA design review for scale, um, massing, screening, open space, um, and just sort of its relationship to the abutting properties. Um, but the home ownership part is uh, something that I appreciate. And um, that's it. So, uh, Mr. Can we also talk okay? about the penthouse? Okay, you just yeah. Oh, I'm right? sorry, and the removal of the head out. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay, is there a second? Is it the, is it the removal of the head hose or the whole? Um, so I think that uh, I think he's going to need. I, I mean, if it's going to be a publicly accessible head house, he needs the elevator to go there. Yeah. Um, and the there is a second head house on the back of the building that's adjacent with the elevator. I think you're going to have to keep one um, due to the size of the building as well. So, but keep the roof deck. That's my guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with the roof deck as long as we get rid of that front head house. And, and so basically a bottom line comment is that it needs to be more contextual. Correct. We're talking about scale, massing, relationship to body. Agreed, yes. Okay, is there, is there a second? Second. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Ehrlich? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone. Calling the next two cases, calling DOA 132 7725 62 to the full street. The companion case, open code DOA 132 7736 62 Liverpool Street. This is a change of art from a three family to a six unit residential dwelling by erecting an addition with roof deck and renovating the existing building. Article, the violation of Article 27 T 5, this is in the East Boston I plot. Article 32, Section 4, G card applicability. Article 53, Section 8, a multifamily dwelling use permit. Article 53, Section 52, roof structure restriction. Article 53, Section 56, on street parking commission. Article 53, Section 9, the additional lot area commission. Article 53, Section 9, the fluid area ratio is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the building has excessive story. Article 53, Section 9, the building has excessive feet. Article 53, Section 9, use multiple spaces and sufficient. Article 53, Section 9, side yard is sufficient, and Article 53, Section 9, the rear yard is sufficient. This is for 62 Liverpool Street. This, this change argument from a three family to a six family residential erected addition with roof deck and renovating the existing building. Violation in the ninth edition, 780 CMR 1011 stairways. 1011.12.2 roof access for a stairway is provided to the roof shall be provided for the penthouse compliant with Section 1510.2. Name and address for the record. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Linz, uh, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, I believe we have uh, building code as well as uh, GCOD to address uh, before let's, we let's, let's start with the building code and then we'll, we'll listen to the GCOD. Sure. So with respect to building code, um, consistent with the board's uh, position on head houses, we are proposing a roof deck in connection with this project, uh, we are proposing not to incorporate a uh, head house and therefore access would be by hatch, which does require relief under the applicable provisions of the building code. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve the building code relief for the access to the roof deck. Is there a second? Fortune? Fortune? Aye. Rajiro? Aye. Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Arouge is also aye. Motion carries. Excuse me, is there no uh, opportunity for Nevada to comment? Hold on, please. Can everybody be muted? Let's go now to the uh, to the case. Um, it's been called into the record. Uh, let's hear from um, Mr. Simonelli. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant. Thank you. We have those letters as well, Madam Chair. Okay. So, Mr. Mr. Lenz, please go ahead and talk about the project. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is a, uh, if we can jump to slide three, uh, actually probably a better site overview. Uh, that slide's perfect right there. We can see the uh, surrounding context of the area. Our building is that uh, brick building uh, to the middle of the screen behind the tree. Uh, this is located just outside of Maverick Square, so within close proximity to Maverick T Station. Um, we are proposing to take the existing structure, which is the pre-existing three-family uh, structure, uh, and convert that to a six-unit dwelling with a complete renovation and vertical addition. As you can see from the surrounding context, there are uh, a large number of multifamily and larger buildings in the immediate vicinity. Uh, we do border the waterfront commercial zone, which has a much more flexible... Oh, hold on, hold on, Councillor. Can you please tell us which is the next drawing so we can understand what sure. is being proposed? Sure, why don't we go to, go to slide eight, showing the rendering. So uh, the proposed condition, uh, as I mentioned, would include a vertical addition, which is that fourth level that we see here, uh, in addition to the roof deck that is not accessed by Head House. If we go to slide 11, um, that's an important uh, one to show the context of the um, surrounding site. Uh, so you can see that the existing building, uh, the existing uh, limits of the existing building. So this is a corner lot uh, on Coppersmith Way in Liverpool Street. Uh, the building currently does occupy the entire site. So many of the violations that are cited under Article 53 uh, relate mostly to the existing conditions of the building, including things like open space and setback. Uh, we do propose to uh, set back our fourth level uh, to allow for the reprogramming of the entire building. Uh, the building is uh, relatively old, so uh, upgrades to both life safety and the actual interior of the building uh, would be a good, uh, uh, you know, a good, a good choice for this particular location. So, Council, let's find out how you're ch you're moving from three to six. Sure. Tell us about the unit sizes and the number of bedrooms. Sure, so with respect to the lower uh, two levels, uh, we are proposing to reprogram it with uh, each of them of being uh, studio size units. So each of these are all in excess of uh, 525 square feet, which is actually more than what is required for the recommended unit sizes for studios. The upper levels, both levels three and four, are bi-level two bedroom units uh, generously sized at over 1,100 square feet each. You would enter into the third level for those units and have an internal stairwell up to the fourth level. The roof deck would be accessible by those upper level units only. Uh, so we, we do reprogram the existing three levels and then add that fourth level uh, to make some additional living space for the upper level units. I'm sorry, so there are two studios and how many two bedrooms? I'm sorry, four studios, two two bedrooms. Four studios and two two bedrooms. That's correct. Um, Mr. Robinson, how are the plans? Uh, plans are fine. Um, I do have a quick question. How are you achieving accessibility um, now that you're at six units? You have stairs going up. So I do have uh, Mr. Zacherson, who is the project architect, uh, who can address that uh, question or concern. Yeah, uh, Mr. Sorry, Ms. Robinson. Um, the building is an existing reno uh, residential building being renovated for residential use. So. I do not believe we have to. We have Group One um, accessible units. Even if it's got rehab. You're exceeding the yeah the uh, thirty percent of the assessed value over a hundred thousand. You have to bring the whole project up to uh, code, I believe. But we'll leave that to you. That's a building code issue. So. Um, and uh, Mr. Mr. Robinson, just to confirm, there's no occupancy in the basement. No, not that I see. Um, okay. okay. Any any any. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Some background information on the community process. Our office held in the Butters meeting for this project on March 8th. The Butters expressed some concerns regarding the setback of the building and comments about the height and potentially eliminating sunlight and the lack of parking in the area. Our office received eight letters of support from abutters. Uh, the project also was presented uh, in front of the Maverick Central Neighborhood Association on April 19th. That group decided to oppose the proposed project. Uh, with that information, we defer to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have four raised hands. Madam Chair, before we go to the uh, secretary here, we do have letters of support. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, Luke, you've been unmuted. If you could state your name and address for the record, please.
Can everybody please hustle along? It's almost 1030 and we need to make sure that we give other people on the agenda adequate time for their projects to be heard. Hello, Luke Bowen, 28 Maverick Street. I'm about a half a block away from the project and am in support of this project. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Michael Underwood, state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, Michael Underwood. I'm in a butter with less than 100 feet away from this project. I am opposed to this project. What is your address, Mr. Underwood? My address is 78 Liverpool Street. Okay, and what is your opposition based on? I, I believe it will have a negative impact on the neighborhood as all the residential structures are three stories. Uh, this is totally out of scale with the, the buildings on Liverpool Street. Parking is a major issue, and uh, this presents a negative parking situation. Uh, and I also believe this is compounded by the, the fact that the, uh, the, uh, the, the same developer plans to build a five-story next door to that very building and a four-story behind it. Uh, and I think uh, the, the future does not look good for this neighborhood if we continue on like this. Uh, thank you. Michael Sellers, you've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Michael Sellers. I represent the ownership group at 56 Liverpool Street, two doors down from this project, and just wanted to go on the record and say that we support this project. Thank you. Sean Sorrentino, you've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Good morning. My name is Sean Sorrentino from 169 Maverick Street, and I just want to say I'm in full support of the project. Okay. Um, a question for Councillor is 56 uh, Liverpool Street, one of the projects, one of the um, sites that this developer proposes to, to change occupancy on? No. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, you know, um, we've heard from you often enough, Mr. Lenz. So when you come in with those other two projects, is this going to be stated as the precedence? Oh, well, my God. It, I, I can, in, in disclosure, I, 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 there, there is a proposal that is going to the community process at 60 Liverpool is not next door, it is across the street from Copper Smith Way. As a vacant lot, it is in a separate zoning district that actually has a 55 foot height limit. Uh, okay. We are still working through the process on that, so we're not we're not going to be talking about precedent with respect to that. But I would point out, based on the site overview, um, th there is height in this area. There are four and five stories surrounding this property, uh, pretty much in all directions. In addition to the vent building located directly across the street from us, which is about seven stories. Okay, uh, given all that information, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve a PPA design review. Um, can I add uh, no building code relief to deal with the questions that Mr. Robinson uh, made? Sure, yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry, can I just clarify that that's not relative, obviously, to the, to the head house issue? Correct. Not to the head house, but it is to uh, accessibility. Access. Understood, thank you. Uh, Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Ehrlich? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo also aye, so motion carries. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling DOA 1331 686 1721 Washington Street. Mr. Ruth, the revisal for takeout use transit for petitioner only, Siri Luck, Laton, and Slumpool, Luton, and Zip Business Equator. To a new operator, PNY Ventures, doing business as Unit Kitchen. No work to be done. The violation of Article 6, Section 4, move the to the petitioner only. Name and address for the record, please. Okay. I didn't have anyone, Madam Chair, I didn't have anyone um, sign in, so I'm going to try to see if these two raised hands are. Patrick, you've been unmuted. Are you here to present on the case? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, 1721 Washington Street. Yes, hi, my name is Patrick Zhu, okay. and I'm the uh, new business owner uh, at 1721 Washington Street. Uh, we're just um, trying to get rid of this uh, proviso attached to the, uh, the old uh, restaurant owner, and no work to be done. So no work to be done, but a change of name and business ownership from Equator to Yunnan Kitchen? Correct. Okay, um, and this is, uh, and you are familiar, have you run any 
restaurants with takeout before in the city of Boston? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I own a, uh, a noodle restaurant in Brighton for uh, six years. Okay. Okay, so um, let's see. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Plans are good. Uh, no questions from me. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition to this proposal? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Pierceli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to defer to the board at this time. We've received no opposition from the abutters. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, from the Council of Large Michael Flaherty, Council of America and Support. Madam Chair, are we all set? I have one raised hand. Well, two. Alita, can you state your name and I just for the record? You have a license. Alita? Oh, hi. Hi, are you here to present on the case? Uh, not on this case, but I have a meeting okay. later. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Right. okay. Just send, send so me a chat, a message on the chat. Me, given, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve with uh, a standard uh, takeout uh, proviso. And Fair for the petitioner only. Thank you. Fair. Um, Fair. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Olek? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo also in support the motion with those two pro provisos carries. Good luck. Thank you. Madam Chair, it's now 1031. I'm going to call the 1030 hearings for any deferrals or withdrawals. Give me the address first, please. This is for 1030 only, deferrals or withdrawals. Yes, can, uh, good, good, uh, good morning. My name is Jonathan Gold. Uh, address uh, first, please. Uh, 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 this is 4011 to 4019 Washington Street. Hold on two seconds. Calling case BOA 109 4129, 411 to 419 Washington Street. Name and address for the record. Yes. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. It's my name is Jonathan Gold. It's, uh, I'm the attorney of record. Its address is 873 Beacon Street, Boston 02215. Uh, the and I'm here uh, on behalf of Neil Gold and the 411 4119 Washington Street LLC. Are you requesting a deferral? We're requesting a deferral. Uh, so what reason? Go ahead. We, when the plans were, when the plans and the application were originally submitted to ISD and then on to the board, we had not yet completed the the uh, BPTA planning process, which we have since done. So there are some minor differences in the plans and certainly the project. And we would like to provide the board with uh, the most recent plans, uh, the revised plans. And so we're seeking a defer. May I have yes. a motion, please? I'll make a motion to defer. Is there a second? Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo also in support the date, please. We'll have a date of uh, November 1st at 1130. Okay, and while we are on this, before we hear from anybody else, just a reminder, we have a six member board. For approval, you need five members in support. Um, so you may uh, avail yourself of, the, of an administrative deferral until such time there is a full board. Go ahead, um, Mr. Fortune, sorry. Yes, are there any more deferrals or withdrawals for the 1030 cases only? If you give me the address first, please. Eric Nano, we'll go back to the 930. Calling DOA 13320581483 East Cottage Street. This is a change of art from a two family to a three family at floor area school footage within the existing footprint of the building and proposed one new parking space. The violation article 65, section 65 41.5, parking size and movability, and article 65, section 9, the floor area is accessible. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Corey Bradley, and the address is the same as the project address, 143 East Cottage Street. Um, as you said, I'm proposing converting uh, my house from a two-family to a three-family and adding livable square feet within the existing footprint. Um, the district here is three up 5,000. 
The project would consist of me splitting a portion of space from the first floor and duplexing it down into a finished basement. Um, this would also involve me fully sprinkling the entire home um, and adding a central firearm system. So tell us first if there's proposed occupancy in the basement and second if you are proposing to split that, that ground floor, what is the proposed size of the units? Uh, yes. So. I am planning on having livable space in the basement, and I know that is a focus, so I do want to draw attention to the size of the openings in the basement. Um, they are wide, double window, four and a half by four and three quarter square feet in each room. Um, and another important detail, that foundation sits up just under five feet from grade, so they are entirely above grade. There's no window well, no obstruction there, they're full height. Um, windows, which uh, will get a lot of natural light on the lower level. Uh, and, you're, and you're proposing one parking space to any of these windows open into the into the driveway? They do not. And where is that parking provided? The parking provided is on the left um, in an existing driveway. And what's the lot size for this? I'm sorry? What's the lot size for this um, building? A lot. The lot size is 4,594. 4,594? 4, 4, Correct. And tell us about the context. How many other three families are on this street? Um, there is a uh, two, if you're looking at the product from the front, there's a two family to the left and then um, a string of uh, six or seven three families. So it, it fits within the uh, within the neighborhood context. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, the plans are fine. I um, didn't believe them when I saw them, so I went by actually yesterday. It's right around by where I live. Um, it is true. The site does fall away, um, the, and the floor is up. So I do think this is a case of, I'll say, lower level garden units that will have uh, adequate light. There's no, doesn't appear to be a need for a uh, window well as well and they are not on the driveway side. So I think it is as uh, the proponent is, is, is explaining, um, and I see no real issues with uh, the proposal at this point. Okay, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Some background information on the community process. Our office held a Butters meeting on July 11th. Uh, Director Butters uh, were present and indicated they were in full support. They would like to see the owner to stay in the neighborhood. Uh, they also have support from the Uphams West Side Civic. With that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Councilor Frank Baker's office would like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have letters of support. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Fortune? Aye. Um, Ruggiero? Aye. Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Raujo also in support, so motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Calling the next two cases, calling DOA 133 4137 275 Hob Street. Calling companion case DOA 13596 38 273 Hob Street. This is for 275. This is allow vehicle access to proposed parking at 273 Hob over Tommy Castle Way, shared by 273 275 Hob. Violation Article 53, Section Side Guide is sufficient. Article 53, Section 57.7. Side yard of certain narrow lots. This is for 273. Directing new four story multi family dwelling contains four units, two parking spots at the rear of the building. Access to a proposed easement shared for 275 and 275 R Hob Street. This is to create one new 2,438 square foot lot. An existing structure to be raised. Violation of Article 25, Section 5, Flood Hazard District. Article 32, Section 32-4, this is the groundwater decod. Article 53, Section 56, off-street parking is insufficient. Article 53, Section 56, off-street parking is insufficient in size. 
Article 53, Section 8, use as the bid. Article 2017-5, this is an East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 56.5, parking maneuverability. Article 53, Section 57.2, conformity with an existing building allowance. Article 53, Section 9, the additional lot area provision. Article 53, Section 9, the void area ratio is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the building has excessive authority. Article 53, Section 9, the building has excessive feet. Article 53, Section 9, the usual space is insufficient. And Article 53, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago uh, with the business address of 11 Beacon Street from Drago in Toscano. Um, here on behalf of my client, City Realty, uh, as was discussed, this is a proposal to combine two lots at 273 Harve to raise the existing uh, structure that's uninhabitable and to erect a four-story residential building with four units and two rear parking spaces. And so, hold on, hold on, Councilor. So this would be a lot that's 2,483 square feet. Correct. This is a three. Okay. And let me find out, Mr. Simonelli, are you on? Yes, Madam Chair. Good morning. Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust. And we have both letters from the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, Secretary, we have a letter. Okay, so we we thank you for Mr. Simonelli. So, uh, Council, these are a lot of violations. Please talk us through and tell us exactly what um, what page we should be looking at to uh, understand the project and also confirm for us that all habitable space is above the flood hazard zone. Yes. So, thank you, Madam Chair. So, th I think the next uh, slide. Uh, yeah, that that shows the units. Um, but just to point out, Madam Chair, this project was before this board with this applicant a little while back. We were denied without prejudice based on uh, Mr. D'Amico's BTD comments, and we were asked to remove a space. Uh, we went back through this originally had been four units with three parking spaces, and the board and Mr. D'Amico believed that that was too tight for maneuverability. So we went back to the community process and removed one of those spaces. So uh, that that is just to point out the reason that we, we brought this back uh, with the changes. Um, did now, so Madam Chair, yes. Mr. Nico has spoken on this and it's regarding the park. Um, if you want me to put it on the record? Please do. Yeah, okay. Regarding 273, 275 Hobbs, um, Board 1 does not have any curb cut on the plan. Also, the request for parking in the rear has, has very poor maneuverability. Okay, so um, since that seems to be the the um, the concern continues to be the concern, just let's focus on the parking and tell us how that's proposed to work. However, I would like you to put on the record um, the units and the unit sizes, please. Sure. Um, so the unit sizes just do that first. So there is no useful space in the basement, Madam Chair. It is in the flood district, and GCAR, there's only mechanicals, common mechanical space. Uh, as we get up to the first floor, uh, there's the main entrance. There's a one bedroom, one bath at 725 square feet. It also has an accessibility lift. Um, second floor is unit two, 975 square foot, three bed, two bath. Third and uh, third floor, Unit three, 950 square feet, three bed, two bath. And then finally, the fourth floor, um, unit four is 1,000 square foot, three bed, two bath. If we could go back um, to address your comments about the parking, um, we have a common, this is perfect, we have a common passageway between us and uh, 275 High um, there, uh, there is not currently a driveway there. We'd be proposing to put in a 10 foot driveway that would lead to the back of the property. Um, the difference is uh, from the last time is we had three spots across in the back. Um, Mr. D'Amico had asked us to remove one spot. Um, and okay. so, right, so let's just focus on this. So you're telling us that the driveway is 10 feet or and what's the curb cut supposed to be? 10 feet. So the curb cut is 10 feet, and what's the and what's the driveway? 10 feet. Okay. So you're not sharing the driveway with the abutter then? We are. So, and that's the use of premises. Uh, okay, got it. 
So Got it. And so if I if I was if I pulled in into space number two, how would I get out of that space? You would back out of the property now, sure. You would back around that corner. Would that is that enough space you think? Uh, without um, crossing the, the property line back out with that edge of the building in there? Um, I believe, I mean, it's 10 feet across um, and there's, it jogs in at the back. So, I mean, it is for this particular area, it is a good sized driveway. Okay. Um, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are fine, no real question on the building. So is the a butter at 273? They don't seem to have parking in the back of their house or any early or 275 sorry yeah, 275 yeah they do not right now right now okay so that's something that they're so you will be sharing that sort of use we, so right now it is just a common passageway we both have rights to it and we're just adding it to traverse to our parking by way of okay um any, any questions from the board mr Olick, you've been very quiet today <laughs> Mr. Robinson's asking all my questions. Okay, got it. I don't believe it, but if, okay, thank if you. anybody had to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office likes to defer judgment to the board. Some background information on the community process. Uh, this applicant went before the Maverick Central Neighborhood Association and received their unanimous support. Um, there were some concerns raised by Butters at the Butters meeting regarding the proposed height, um, parking, and uh, density jumping from a one to a four, um, with some expressing that they prefer an as-of-right project three units. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, yeah, we do have orders of support. Ms. Ambassador, any raised hands? No raised hands, Madam Chair. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve what BPDA is aggregate. Is there a second? I'll second that. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Olick? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Around your option support, the motion carries. I'm assuming, Mr. Um, Hampton, that you look and to make sure that nobody there's enough room so nobody backs into the building. We'll try our best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, members of the board. Calling the next case, calling BOA 1338215, 67 to 71 West Cedar Street. It's combined occupancy of 12 units from three buildings, 67, 69, and 71, and then changed to a seven unit uh, structure. Well, the full gut renovation of the building. Violations of Article 13, Section 13 1, Dimensional Regulation, Article 13, Section 1, the Fluidity Ratio is excessive, Article 13, Section 1, Side Yards Insufficient, and Article 13, Section 3, Non Conformity of a Dimensional Client. Name and address for the record. John Moran, Alpine Advisory Services, with the mailing address of 130 Beach Road, Orleans, Mass. Uh, Madam Chair, the, the appellant has combined the three buildings which are non-conforming structurally to the zoning code and is proposing to reduce the number of dwelling units from 12 to 7. The new units would range in size from the smallest being 810 square feet to the largest being 1,415 square feet. Six of the seven units are two bedrooms. One is a single one bedroom unit. The non-conformity deals with FAR. The code provides for an allowance of two. The existing FAR is 3.03. .03. Mr. Moran? Yes. Um, I just want to make sure that um, the only, um, so you're putting a small, uh, tell us about the rear yard extension because that and the balconies, please, because it looks yeah. like all the rest of the violations may be existing. Yeah. Well, the, a, the existing L to the rear runs to the property line. That is a dimensional violation. Uh, that L is going to be rehabilitated. It is a two-story structure, and we are proposing to uh, place a roof deck on that L with a setback of five feet from the property line. 
The other two proposed decks, uh, rear decks, which will be cantilevered, located at the second and fourth floor, and will project out five feet. Uh, again, it's the L to the rear which creates a non-conforming structure, and therefore a dimensional violation. The sited rear yard uh, is not a violation. This is in a H265 row house district. Uh, we suggest that that uh, violation is the side yard violation does not okay, apply to the. Hold on, let me just ask, was this project before this board in the past? No. No? Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Um, plans are fine. I, I really have no problem with any of the proposed pieces, I guess, except for the basement units. <laughs> they, the base they, oh, sorry, thank you for raising that. So tell yeah. us, Mr. Moran, our feelings about basement units you know. Tell us about the basement occupancy. The basement unit has uh, access to the garden level in the rear. It, that is the one unit, one bedroom uh, unit. And so how, how, how basementy, that <laughs> the word, is it towards the street? It is uh, all of the units were had base, all the prior units were had basement units. There are windows on the street level, and the proposed room at the street level is designed to be an office study. Okay. Mr. Robinson, are you comfortable with that response? Mr. Olick, are you too? Um, just having a, a not, tactical issues here? I cannot. I, cannot, not, I mean, I, I'm honestly not really. Um, the Cedar Street elevation, which is page A6 of the package, I think shows, to me, the challenge of this. Obviously, the street slopes. Um, it seems like there's more usable there on the left-hand side. Uh, you know, those are bedrooms on the right-hand side with those little tiny slip windows. Um, and they, they obviously gain more height as you move left. But And then the rear are wells um, dug into the um site as you can see on the right hand side those are underground wells so i mean it, it is it's a challenging site i get but i think there are some concerns in terms of that in my opinion that this board has sort of thought about and talked about before so that those are my only comments on on the proposal so so mr moran just clearly um, uh, clarify for me this is a gut rehab yes it is fully sprinkled and Okay, so so when when there's a gut rehab, um, you know, we expect that the applicant will make some um, some modifications so that there's less of that um, that occupancy in the basement. Uh, Madam Chair, it, it does appear it's a little hard to tell from the various uh, elevations, but it does appear that most of the basement space is underground. Okay. Um, so, um, is anybody here to speak either? In there, if I may, the, yep. this, this uh, basement condition is very common in the Back Bay, uh, I'm sorry, in Beacon Hill. Uh, and these were existing uh, basement units when there were 12 units in the three buildings. Uh, the wells do provide access and light and it's a very common type of uh, unit in the Okay, um, is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair. Chair. This is Jacob. Members of the board, this is Maggie from the Office of Neighborhood Services. From what our office understood from the community process, there is some initial controversy. It seems that that has been worked out. Um, the Civic Association is in non-opposition to this project, and we've received a few letters of support from the proposal. So tell us what the controversy was and how it was resolved. Madam Chair, the controversy- I'm, 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 I'm asking the Mayor's Office of oh, no, sorry. Services. Thank you. I believe that there was an initial proposal for a condo conversion, but they have backtracked on that. 
Okay, so it was, okay, got it. But as far as the number of units, they've stayed the same. Yes. I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, so, um, anybody else, Ms. Ambassador? Good morning, Madam Chair. This is Jacob Warner uh, from the Office of City Councilor Kenzie Buck, District oh. 8. Wanted to read two um, points from the councilor into the record. First is the importance uh, for the condo conversion law to be upheld. Uh, this building has not uh, complied with the condo conversion law, so that it, we expect it to be apartments that are at this site. The second point being uh, the council would like to see the good neighbor agreement with the Beacon Health Civic Association signed um, uh, as expeditiously as possible. Does the, and does the councilor, I know this might be kind of putting you on the spot, but does the councilor have any issues with the basement occupancy? Uh, the, the council would have the same concerns that were echoed by the uh, residents as well as the uh, folks that have been bringing them up. She's in, uh, has the same opinion as the people that brought up those concerns. You? Madam Chair, I do have one raised hand. Okay, let's go for it. Guy, you, you've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Mr. Grassi, you're the architect for this project, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. My, my name is so Guy Grassi. Go ahead and clarify whatever statements need to be clarified. I, I just want to say the there there are three basement units proposed, but they're duplexes with the first floor. So the living space, the living level, is on the first floor, which gets great light. They're connected to the gardens in the rear, um, so you can walk out a door into the rear garden. So they all have open space. The, there are two bedrooms located in the basement for each of the duplex units. One of the bedrooms has a very large area well. Um, and gets good light and view of the garden, even though it is below grade. In the front, um, as pointed out earlier, there are windows to the street. They're small bedrooms, not uncharacteristic to Beacon Hill. Um, and I think they're appropriate for the kinds of uses. It won't be done for another one. But they're, just to make it clear, they're, they're all three units are, are duplexes with the first floor. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have a few letters of support. Unfortunately, I couldn't get on earlier. Um, I, yes, got it. Um, I'm sorry, there's a garbage truck out there. So if you are hearing a disturbance, sorry about that. Um, uh, so may I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion uh, to approve, but with a proviso that there be no bedrooms uh, in the basement. Since they're duplexes, they can uh, reconfigure the uh, floor plans to make sure that the bedrooms have adequate light and are above grade. I'll second that. Madam Chair, you're on mute. Do we need BPDA to review that? so that it is clearly um clearly um uh, it's followed through on well it, it's uh it's all interior but that we can leave, leave that to mr hampton's uh good judgment i think that would be on isd to enforce this proviso and not us okay got it so and you want to be, and the beacon hill okay so may I, so the motion is for approval with no bedrooms in the basement there's a second uh, Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Ehrlich? Aye. Dong? <clears throat> Robinson? Aye. Arauja is also in support, so motion carries. This board will take a 15-minute break. It's now 11 o'clock, and we'll convene at 11.15. Thank you. Recording stopped.
Recording in progress. Board of Appeal is back in session. This is a reminder that this is a six member board today. And for projects to be approved, you need five members in support. Thus, applicants have the ability to request a, an administrative deferral until such time that there is a full member board. Also a reminder, if you're speaking in support or in opposition to the project, put your name and address on the record. If somebody else has already um, stated your concerns, make sure that you uh, use your time to give us new information. Otherwise, just put your name and address on the record. Uh, Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. Call the first case uh, for 1030. Sorry. Next case, case BOA 1340939. 48 Waterman Road. This is a gut renovation of existing structure. We're concluding converting the current structure from a one and a half story cape to a two and a half story colonial style home. <coughs> Violation of Article 55, Section 12, front yard is insufficient. Article 55, Section 12, side yard is insufficient. And Article 55, Section 40, Article 5, closing. Name and address for the record. Madam Chair, no one um, logged in this morning. Let me see if these two. Um... Yamina? Hello, hello, hello. Hi, are you, are you here for 48 Waterman Road? Um, no. oh. Okay, Yamina, you're having issues with your. Um, with your yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's still a background noise. I can't really make out what you're saying. Um, can I use the chat? Yes, are you here for 48 Waterman Road? No, I'm here. Um, okay. okay, just let me know on the chat, please. In the meantime, let's move on to the next address. Okay. 135-2127-57 Nixon Street. Is there a model existing third floor? Violation of Article 65, Section 9, the four-day ratio is excessive. In Article 65, Section 9, building height is accepted in story. Name and address for the record, please. Yeah, my name is Albert Puma, uh, CSL holder contractor for 57 Nixon Street, Boston. So tell us what's being proposed. Hey, good morning. Um, so what we are doing, this is an existing two-family house. It will remain the same use structure. What we are doing is remodeling an existing finished third floor. Um, there's already an existing bathroom and bedrooms up there. What we are doing is adding an additional bathroom, okay? And taking this big living room space, what's currently, you know, the master bedroom on the proposed plan and making that family room and master bedroom uh, separating this one big open space into a master bedroom and a family room and then dormering off um, as you can see on the bottom of the plan dormering that so that it's uh, um, so that, you know we can actually stand in there so let me just ask you how many bedrooms will unit two have then yeah so you uh, so that's a good question so currently i believe there are three bedrooms there so this would be a, a fourth bedroom because unit two is a second and there is a second and a third floor so it'll be changing from a two bedroom to a three bedroom from a three to a four sorry three bed three to a four okay yeah. and tell us about the floor to ceiling height yeah so currently the you know the um yeah, thank you for pointing that up. So you can see there's already existing, you know, dormers and uh, varying pitches on the uh, on the existing house. All, all we're doing there is we're, we're not going any taller than the ceilings that are currently there. So what the dormer well, would allow yeah. for. So sorry. for me, for me, I'm just looking at it. I'm not I'm not a designer by any means, but I'm looking at it and it's kind of a mishmash of things going on up there. Um, how are you bringing cohesion to it? Yeah, so what you're seeing right now, uh, of course, are the existing dormers that, that have been there for, you know, probably as old as, uh, as the house. So when, you know, when this was designed, they, you know, they kept that aesthetic of the neighborhood and of the house in mind as well. Granted, this is going to be a larger dormer than, as you can see, the other ones are. 
um, you know, but it, but it will be, um, but it will be offering, you know, similar heights in terms of the dormers. The only difference is, is that this is slightly longer and it's going to be a shed style roof versus the gabled dormers that you're, that you're seeing there. And it's proposed to continue to be a two family? Correct. Yes. And okay. yeah, the same owners will live there. Currently, um, the owner is Israel uh, Marrero, is a Boston police officer who lives there with his family. And um, his mother in law lives on the first floor, so it will remain a family home. Okay, thank you. Currently oh, is hold, on one, hold on one minute. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are um, good. No, no real questions. It look, it's a little hard to read, but it looks like it's seven foot nine clear. So I think it should be plenty. Should uh, okay. Yeah. I think we're no questions from. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, George Quinn with Marion's Office Nippet Services. Our office hosted a butters meeting on July 20th. The butters were in support, uh, as was the St. Mark Area Civic Association. So at this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we just have one letter of support from St. Mark. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at Live, Michael Flaherty, Council for Going Record Support. Madam Chair, I have three raised hands. Let's uh, let's let's go through them. Joanna, you've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Joanna. Sorry about that. I, I'm waiting to raise my hand. You can you can mute me. I, I raised it accidentally. I'm not. Okay. 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 No problem. Thank you. Sergio, um, Sergio, you've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. And I'd like to hear from a butters on, on, on these coming projects. So if you're not in a butter, please put down your hand. I'm sorry, I was waiting for uh, for the awardment. It's on, put your name and address on the record and tell us if you're in support or opposition. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, and what is your name? Sergio Medrano, I live in Fifth. Sergio, are you the owner of and the applicant and Waterman? No, I okay. live right behind. Okay. okay, so put your hand down, please. Ms. Ambassador, anybody else? Izzy, you've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning. Izzy, we can't hear you. The service. Okay. Uh, you hear me now? No. Can you now? Yeah, go ahead. Hi, I'm not um, Sorry, here Lord. for this project. I'm sorry, are you ready for me, Izzy, or no? Yep. Yes, please state your name and address okay. for the record, please. Good morning, Izzy Marrero, owner of 57 Nixon Street. I, I just asked. I assume that you're in support of your own project? Absolutely, I'm just here to answer any Thank questions you. that anyone Thank may you. have of me. Thank you. Uh, may I have a motion, please, on this project? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve with uh, BPA to sign review. Second. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Oleg? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo, also in support, so motion is to approve for uh, approval with design review. Good luck. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling the OA 135 3559, 4166 to 4168A, Washington Street. This is a change of art from a dry cleaners to a smoothie shop. Violation Article 67, Section 8, Use Condition, Stakeout Restaurant. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rosemary Valles. I'm here with Be Healthy Nutrition for 4166 Washington Street. And they are thinking a change of occupancy from dry cleaners to smoothie shop. Okay, are you, um, all, you're just here, from what I can tell, just for the change of use, you're not here for takeout. Correct. Correct, so, um, okay. 
So um, just tell us this, this uh, tell us quickly what your hours of operation are. So we're currently not open yet. This is what we propose it to look like. Right now it's, it's empty. Okay. Uh, but we're gonna be open from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, and then eight to three on Saturdays, and we're closed on Sunday. Okay, um, though I think um, actually, what is the, the, it is it is for takeout, okay. Because the, okay. Um, how are the plants, Mr. Um, Robinson? Is, is it handicapped accessible? Looks, it appears to be no real questions. I guess my only question, is there any exterior changes that you're going to do? I, you probably, I assume you'll have signage, but anything to the building itself or no? No changes to the building. Okay, no questions from me, thank you. Okay, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Uju Anochi. Um, we held a meeting for this project on 727. Um, about six people attended. Uh, they were pretty happy about this project, especially because it was um, owned by a person of color. Um, they have contacted the closest neighborhood association and we, my office has not received any letters in support or opposition of the project and we'll be deferring um, judgment for the board. Madam Chair, Secretary, we do have a few letters of support. Okay. Madam, Chairman, Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sauber, the top of Wise Michael Fry, comes with your record support. Okay. Mr. Ambassador, are we all good? All good. No raised hands, Madam Chair. Motion, please. Uh, motion to approve uh, with the usual takeout provisos. And this petition only? This petition only, yep. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Around you also in support. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. On the next case, calling BOA 135-9936-175 Worth for the street. They are parking the existing three-family house, looking for a curb cut with three parking spots. Violation Article 53, Section 9, parking is parking. Dimensional regulation parking required front yard is not allowed. In Article 53, Section 56, our street parking coding time maneuvering. Name and address for the record, please. I'm Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. Uh, business address of 51 Adoption Road. Madam Chair, we are here today seeking relief um, to legalize the three option parking spots that already exist at the current location. Uh, the zoning subdistrict here is a two. Uh, of 4,000, a lot size of 6,290 square feet. Um, the parking is in the rear of the building itself as the building fronts on Wordsworth Street and the curb, the existing curb cut comes off of Calvary Street. So we're looking to create three parking spaces um, in the rear of, of the building. Okay. Uh, has this project been before this board in the past? Yes, Madam Chair, this project was before the board earlier this year, February, um, and that was to erect a family dwelling, which we did. Um, come to find out, parking was already existing. Come to find out after the fact um, that the parking that existed wasn't, was never legalized. Um, and so ISD uh, had us come back under a use premises um, permit application to legalize the parking. Okay. Um, okay. Um, any questions from the board? I mean, sorry, Mr. Robinson, how are the plans? Uh, well, um, so I guess I is, is Mr. D'Amico on? Not the yeah, but Mr. D'Amico is on, I believe. Okay, because I mean, the alignment of the curb cut doesn't appear to align with the parking um, in the photos. So I think um, there's a way to walk around this because the BPDA has also recommended denial without prejudice, but um, there might be a way to um, to work it through motions and through provisos. 
But go ahead, Mr. D'Amico, what is your thought? Uh, Madam Chair, lady, members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTD. There are no um, parking uh, designs on the plan, so I don't know how the cars are going to be parked. And from what I can see, uh, I think three cars might be a little bit difficult for maneuverability. And uh, like previously stated, the uh, curb cut is not even close to being where the vehicles would enter. So there's a lot of work here. Thank okay. you. Any other questions from the board? Uh, I, mean, I, I see how it works. I think we can just make some provisions. Yeah. Uh, is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. Our office held an abutters meeting on May 25th. Uh, direct abutters were in favor of legalizing the existing parking. No concerns were raised by residents. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have two raised hands. Let's, let's go, please. Bob, you've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. And that was Mr. Domingo. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Can we get to oh, CJ? <laughs> yes, CJ. CJ, hi, you've been unmuted. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. 496 Bennington Street, East Boston. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the uh, zoning board. Uh, I think this is a case of where you they have put the cart before the, ho the horse. Uh, uh, it was brought up at the Harborview meeting that these these units are uh, they are occupied. Uh, this would set a very serious precedent if uh, if the parking is uh, allowed to be put in here. This would mean that any existing curb cut in the city of Boston would allow any homeowner to go in there and just lay down asphalt and make it parking without going through the so, proper um, let, me, let me just ask you, so are you contending that in fact this is not pre-existing parking that uh, was on the site? Well, the gentleman that just testified basically stated they did not go through the proper procedure to apply for parking. So uh, what okay. I'm okay, because saying... Okay, thank you. Because my understanding is that this parking was there before, but okay. So in the meantime, let's go ahead um, and thank you for your comment, uh, Mr. Uh, CJ. Um, um, okay, so we have all that on the record. Um, may I have <coughs> May I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to approve um, with BPDA design review. Um, for where the car, curb cut should be and the amount of spots that can fit back there. So we're we talking, add, we had talking. Uh, can we add screening and buffering to that? Okay, yes. so, so hold on. So we're looking at approval with design review for BPDA design review so that the curb cut is centered with the paved area. Um, I'm just trying to take their denial and make it positive. Okay, with centered, um, Centered with paved area and and screening and buffering. Yep. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Fortune. Aye. Ruggiero. Aye. Ulrich. Aye. Dong. Aye. Robinson. Aye. Raujo's also in support. So motion carries with design review uh, and screening and buffering. Good luck. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Members of the board, have a good day. Calling the next case, calling BOA 136 1985 108 to 108E, Alston Street. This is direct six new townhomes. Violation is Article 51, Section 56, must be parking insufficient. Article 51, Section 8, forbidden use in a 2F 5000 subdistrict. Article 51, Section 9, the flood area is accessible. Article 51, Section 9, the building is accessible in storage. Article 51, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 51, Section 9, side yards are sufficient. Article 51, Section 9, the rear yards are sufficient. And Article 51, Section 9.4, the dimensional regulation for the main entrance. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Ryan Spitz, Adams and Maranci, with the business address of 168 H Street, first floor, South Boston. Uh, with me today from the development team is Brian McGrath, and as well as Alita from True and Associates, who is the architect. 
So the current site consists of the existing dilapidated tree family in a garage in the rear of the lot. The proposal here is to erect a new three-story building with six ownership townhomes with one off-street parking per unit utilizing an existing curb cut in driveway on a 9,000 square foot lot. So, uh, Councillor, have yes. you seen the BPDA's recommendation? I have not, Madam Chair. Okay, it's it's recommending denial without prejudice, and because it's our, it's our city's planning agency, it does state that the proposal is excessive in height and density, and the proponent should consider a proposal that complies with the height and density requirements of the zoning code. Okay, so you should, and, and it further states that it, the site plans uh, should um, pay, pay special attention to the surrounding context. Um, there is also a um, six member board today uh, and you need five members in support. So given all those clues, I would suggest that you, um, you, you reconsider your next steps. Okay, so um, definitely knowing that there's a six member board, we will um, reserve our right to an administrative deferral. Uh, but also I'd like to note um, in respect to the BPDA stance on the height, uh, we are compliant under height, okay. but excessive in the stories portion of it seeking free. Uh, got uh, it, because um, if this is a 2F 5,000, so it's two and a half stories, but you should, and your applicant should have looked at it contextually. Okay, may I have a motion for deferral? Motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Olick? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Around you? Aye. It's Robinson is aye, sorry. Got it, got it. Um, so the motion for deferral carries the date, please. Of a date of November 1st at 1130. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you, good luck. In the meantime, so we have one more. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'm gonna go back to Waterman Road, HBOA okay. 1340939, 48 Waterman Road, are you on? Madam Chair, it is now 11.38, I'm gonna make a motion to deny without prejudice. There a second. Okay. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Olick? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Uh, aye. <laughs> Roger is also aye, so motion carries for denial without prejudice. Madam Chair, it's now 11.38. I'm going to call the 11.30 rediscussion for any deferrals or withdrawals. This is for the 11.30 rediscussion. Any deferrals or withdrawals, you can give me the address first. I agree straight. For the record, calling BOA 121-5328, 5 Green Street. Name and address for the record. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. We are seeking an administrative deferral uh, for a full board uh, at a hearing. Thank you. We have a motion, please. Motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo also in support the date, please. Yeah, November 1st at 11.30. Thank you very much. Are there any other deferrals and withdrawals to the 11.30 rediscussion? Mr. Secretary, 82 Webster Street. Council for the record, calling DOA 132-7753-82 Webster Street. Name and address for the record. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Lenz, 245 Sumner Street. East Boston, uh, Mr. Secretary, we are requesting withdrawal. Uh, motion. Make, motion to defer. Denied without make prejudice. I'll make a motion to deny without prejudice. Second. Oh, withdrawal, I'm sorry, okay. Fortune? Aye. Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Olick? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo also in support, so the motion carries for denial without prejudice. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 1130? 126 Layton Street, Mr. Secretary. How about 124 as well? Yes, please. For the record, calling DOA 130 3397, 124 Layton Street. There's also a companion case, DOA 130 3651, 126 Layton Street. Name and address for the record. 
Again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Lenz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner, requesting administrative deferral for a full board. Motion to deny without prejudice. You're switching cases here. Yeah, is there a second? I second. Okay, uh, Fortune. Aye. Ruggiero. I'm recusing. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good thing then. Um, well, <laughs> Aye. Dog. Aye. Robinson. Aye. Raujo also, uh, so motion for deferral carries. The date, please. Uh, we're going to have a date of November 1st at 11.30. Um, thank you. Is that a full board? Are we, are we aware if that's a full board? It, it should be, uh, Councillor. As thank it stands you. right now, yes. Thank you. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 11.30 rediscussion? Hearing none, I'll go to the 10.30 cases. Calling VOA 127, 2494, 254 to 256 Bennington Street. This is a first floor occupant will remain at 49, include 38 seats, increase, increase the occupant load on the second floor. The second floor function will be open. 81 total, 34 standing, and 47 seats. Or options two, 119 total, but 114 standing with five seats. A violation of Article 9, Section 1, extension of an non conforming use. Name and address for the record. Is there anybody on for 254 or 256 Bennington Street? I will come back to that one. Following the next Problem. case. Oh. Somebody here for? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, um, for the record, please. Yeah, Michael Warius. I'm, uh, I'm here for uh, 254, 256 Bennington Street, Cabana LV Inc. Put your name and address on the record and tell us what's being proposed. Yes, Michael Warius. I'm at the Powerhouse Building at the Shraff Center, 529 Main Street, Suite P200, Charleston, uh, Massachusetts. Um, I'm proposing here that they increase capacity for the second floor that this restaurant currently is a, a restaurant that serves the residents of East Boston it serves the Latin community well um, it does family functions uh, it wants to do but, family but, functions so let me ask you what is the name of the restaurant first and foremost we need that the, on the, the restaurant's name is Cabana Grill okay and so they are looking to increase to extend um, occupancy to the second floor um and um let's just find out and so there's lots of options here but we understand that the first floor will remain at 49. tell us in the meantime have they reached a decision on what the second floor is going to be at this time i think both options are available well they, um, they, they would... okay because my my question then becomes um, we need to know kind of what we're approving um, so that we can um, uh, so we can hold you to it if your occupancy changes or anything happens. I was appearing today with uh, attorney Jean Charney. I think he was uh, he's, okay. was also on the Zoom. Um, and, uh, and just a quick question. Are you uh, proposing any music or anything up there? Um, I, I, I was supposed, I was today appearing with Attorney Charney. I believe he's waiting on on the Zoom right now. Um, Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, put your name and address on the record, and let's get moving on this. Okay, my, my name is Gene Charney. Um, my business address is six seventy five, BFW Parkway, Chestnut Hill. I say I'm former counsel because this is the thirteenth day of my retirement from the practice of law. So Michael Lori Ash's successor counsel. The there the so second floor. So let's just floor. say congratulations to you. Um, <laughs> and just Thank you. And so and, and um, I guess good retire good uh, lawyers never retire. So tell us about that second floor occupancy. We just want to know if there's going to be a disturbance noise wise to any of the abutters, or if there is uh, protections in place for that. Well, th this is a standalone building. The 
owners of the, the Cabana Grill, the restaurant, own the building. The second floor is to be for functions. The difference is some functions may want seating at tables. So that is why the, the initial, the first option of 81 people 30, uh, was seated. The second is if people just want to have a flow, there is no plans at all for anything of a nightclub nature. Uh, so there won't be loud, raucous parties of that nature. Again, the intent, the, the feedback that the, the owners have gotten from the residents of the community have said that they want to have their wedding anniversaries there, grandma's 80th party. Excuse me for my mispronunciation, but Quintanara Ana parties, which is sort of like a Latin sweet 16 party. Uh, they okay, may- so, so council, hold on a second, okay? How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are fine. I, I mean, I guess assuming, I mean, it's just tied to occupancy issues. So it seems like we should be really thinking about the higher occupancy, which is the standing room option at 114. Right. So yeah, was I, I don't, I don't have any issue with okay. that as it's proposed. It has an elevator. It's, you know, it's fine. I don't see okay. any. Yep. Any questions from the board? Yeah, uh, hours of operation for the functions. Well, the hours of the functions would probably not go any later than 11 o'clock uh, based upon the current hours of the operation of the restaurant. Um, one other thing that I, I do think is important that the functions would be have to have food. They would not be just an open bar because the, the uh, underlying liquor license is a food with beverage. So in terms of whether this is going to be a party room, yes, it's going to be a party room, but more of a family party room. It's not going to be somebody saying, hey, let's go up there and have a, a, a dance drinking party. That's not what it is intended to do. Okay, thank you. I any other questions from the board? Yeah, what's the second floor currently used for? Well, right now, it's nothing. There's, there's, there's nothing. It's, it's been rehabbed and brought up to code, the con as you can see, the plans. Uh, the problem was that I had initially filed for alteration permit, which included the uh, occupancy change. The ISD came back and they wanted some information from the contractor, and then the contractor fired their, filed their own alteration uh, request without the occupancy. Hence, that's why we're here. We may have been here had the contractor included it. That remains to be seen, but we're here now because they're not using it at all. At one time prior to their use, I believe previous owners were using it as uh, uh, like a nightclub issue type thing and so, so it caused concern. All right, okay, the, we, the, we the understand. So I'm, question. The reason I'm asking, Madam, Madam Chair, is I'm looking at the, the Google map. It, the building is not that big. And I'm thinking 119 people is a, a, a concerned number of people. I mean, I assume the fire department would have their own issues about the limits on the, the occupancy, but um, that seems like a lot of people in a relatively small space. Well, if, if I may address that, um, the architect who designed this, and I don't have his name off the top of the head, does do restaurant designs and did do the occupancy uh, according to standards of the building code and code. So those uh, requested occupancies are within. Now, again, if, if the fire department comes in and says something differently, that, that would certainly change the issue. But my understanding is, is that as it stands now, those requested occupancies are within legal bounds. Is that, is, that your, is that your understanding, Mr. Robinson? So it is calculated at five square feet per person, which is a standard for assembly uh, standing room. So that's what that max is. If that's the hatched area on the plan, um, it's people standing. Usually you calculate at five square feet and the area is calculated at 114 people. So, I mean, the egress capacity should be adequate in terms of its and the, the, the separation, but you're right, it's a BFD question, but... Um, Mr. Robinson, Secretary here, is, is the building fully sprinkled? Yes. It is? Yes. Okay. So that's so, 99 or more that you'd have to sprinkle yep. a particular and, and And the last question, it does have handicapped access? It does have an elevator? It does. Okay, good. Okay, let's move on. Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? 
Ms. Ambassador, uh, the two raised hands so far, uh, Jean Charmy, Charney and Michael um, are both uh, here on behalf of the applicant. Correct, there are no, no other raised hands. Chair. Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office conducted a butters meeting on March 29th. Seven of others joined the meeting uh, and expressed their support for this proposal. Um, they were excited about more community space uh, for the Latino community uh, to have such events such as uh, quinceañeras. Uh, no concerns were raised at the meeting, although there was an abutter who reached out afterwards to express concerns regarding parking. Uh, the project also presented to the Eagle Hill Civic Association twice in March and in June. Uh, members had expressed concerns regarding security for busy nights when restaurants were expecting overflow. They also expressed that they did not want to have this turned into a nightclub, which the applicant referenced. Um, ultimately, they ended up supporting um, 11 members in favor and three opposed. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Any, anybody from uh, City Councilor's office? Okay, uh, may I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with the following proviso um, that functions end by 11 p.m. and that they come back in two years um, to give us an update about how things go, two years from occupancy. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that, Eric. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Alec? Mm -hmm. Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo also in support. Uh, council, just make sure that your successful, successful council knows about this, um, this uh, two years and that we, we see the project in that time. So motion carries, good luck. Yes, thank you. Calling your next case, calling BOA 1334387, 25 Athlete This is a new bill construction of a two family townhouse. A violation of Article 65, Section 9, the law to area is sufficient. In Article 65, Section 9, the four day ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record. Uh, yes, good day. My name is Charles Robson. Uh, my address is 253 Reservation Road. Uh, Good day, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, my colleague, uh, Jonah Manigat, is the architect on record for this project. And we're proposing a two-family uh, new construction project. We would like to uh, go over some of the proposed requirements. Um, Jonah, would so, you take it from there? So, so please, um, um, Mr. Green, tell us about, um, first tell us what page we should be looking at so we understand how the project works um, and the square footage and what the uh, what we should be looking at for um, um, design. What, what page we should be looking at for design. I would like to defer to the architect to follow through with that process, if that's okay with you, Madam. Yes, please, so whoever the architect is, put your name and address on the record. Madam Chair, this is Tom. He's rejoining as an attendee because he was sharing the screen that we need. In the meantime, Mr. Robinson, how is how are the plans? I think the plans are good. I think the uh, proposal uh, fits contextually. I think it needs some work on the site plan. It's showing two curb cuts and parking in the front yard on both sides. Um, but I think that uh, other than that, I have no questions except for specifically the site plan. So. Okay, got it. Okay. Any occupancy in the basement? Doesn't appear so. Okay, and the only, the, so the two violations are the lot area insufficiency and the FAR ex ex excess. Okay, is the, is the architect on? If you're on, please put your name and address on the record. Jonah Manigat, 36 Bloomfield Street, Boston, Mass, 2108. Okay, so please tell us um, um, what page we should be looking at to understand how this project works. And uh, you may have heard uh, our concern about the two curb cuts and that there is, in both cases, because this is a corner lot, considered front yard parking. 
Yes, actually, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, during the committee meetings, we've had conversations with, uh, with uh, the community, and they actually uh, uh, want us to actually have one curb card. So I think uh, this is probably going to go to the BPDA review. So I think in the final version of this, we'll, we will, we, I think we will end up with just one curb card that will have side-by-side -side parking for the two units. Okay, and um, what page should we look at to see what this project will look like? So uh, I think uh, if, if somebody's calling very, oh yeah, I mean, you're looking at the elevation now, I mean, uh, this is this is the front elevation. Okay. Uh, and, so, and I think. Go ahead. Uh, I, I think you will, there's one, one elevation will be for the after Wall Street and the, the other front elevation will be on Spencer Street. It's a corner lot. So we're taking advantage of the corner lot to allow each uh, uh, unit to have their own front entrance. So it will be a little, feel a little bit independent from each other. So one person will enter on Atherwell, the other person will enter on Spencer Street. They all have their own private entrances. It's a two bedroom unit uh, building, around 1,400 square feet total. Uh, we're, not providing, we're not proposing anything in the basement. We, uh, uh, it's, it's, two, uh, it's living space on the, on the ground floor. Thank uh, you. Thank you. I'm going okay. to <laughs> thank you for being so, thank you for being so quick. Um, any mm -hmm. other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office held in the Butters meeting on June 29th. The applicant worked closely with the Director Butters and the Association around density concerns, um, as well as addressing parking and the request to see home ownership. Uh, they have support from the community, as well as the WOW Association. Mr. Ambassador, are we good? All good. No raised hands, Madam Chair. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve with BPA design review, specifically looking at the site plan and the curb cuts to reduce it to a single curb cut. And, and, no, and no front yard parking. And no front yard parking. Thank you. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Olick? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo is also in support. So motion for approval with design review uh, carries. Good luck. Thank you. Calling your next case, calling BOA 133 8631 539 to 553 East Broadway. This is a change of art to takeout restaurant phase one fit out for commercial kitchen and celery space vestibule, approximately 100 square feet. The violations, Article 68, Section 7, takeout restaurant. Name and address for the record, please. Hey. Hey. Is the applicant here for East Broad uh, for East Broadway? I am. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Put your name and address oh. on the record and tell us oh. what's being proposed. Uh, John Tunney, 543 East Broadway. Uh, we're looking to take a former uh, takeout coffee shop that my parents ran for 30 years and uh, invest some money to make it more of a, a kitchen for takeout. Um, with the COVID, we were unable to transition properly and are looking to invest some money to make more full options um, along with the coffee and food. So if you're proposing takeout, what's the name of the, of the, of the business? It will continue to be known as the Java House. The, uh, sorry, the dropout? The Java House? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, and is it handicapped accessible? Uh, yes, it is. OK. Uh, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. No questions on what they're proposing. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS held in the Butters meeting for 539, 553 East Broadway on July 19th, 2022. For the most part, Butters enthusiastically expressed their support. There are a few questions about ventilation and trash removal. The Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association is in support of this proposal. At this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Alicia, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at large, Michael Clarity. Although his uh, opinion as to uh, Article 68 has been consistent, uh, there are uh, potential projects that do have merit. Uh, this is a project that would allow the Java House uh, to um, add a kitchen, serve, uh, serve more food, and to um, allow the, uh, the their bowling alley that they, that they, uh, they uh, own next to it to be remain viable uh, within the South Boston community. Uh, they've been good, good community members, therefore the council would uh, leave it to the board's discretion. Madam Chair, Secretary, we do have a few letters of support. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion? A uh, motion to approve with, for this petition or only and the usual takeout provisos. Second. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Uh, Ulick? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo is also uh, in support. Motion carries. Good luck with the approval of the provisos. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 134 4459, 12 Basto Terrace. This is the demo roof and the rear elevation, front elevation roof, main, no foundation work, frame of full length dormer off the rear elevation and renovation of the existing bathroom and a bedroom in the attic. Violations Article 67, Section 9, the fluid air ratio is excessive, and Article 67, Section 9, the bill and height is excessive in stories. Name and address for the record, please. <clears throat> Hi, this is Amanda Gear for oh, well, popular construction. Brady Basin's here for uh, to talk on this. So uh, please tell us what's being proposed. Is first tell us what um, is this a one or a two family, and then take us talk us through what this is proposed to be. I'm sorry, Brady Benson has his hand raised. Um, he wasn't able to get in as a panelist. Yeah, he's been elevated to a seat. panelist. Okay. Come on, let's go ahead. Brady, are you on? It doesn't seem that he's getting that. Could he just be given permission to? Okay, um, yeah. Go ahead, Brady. Yeah, I just unmuted. Brady? In the meantime, Mr. Robinson, how are the plans? Plans are good. It's fairly straightforward. I mean, it's adding a minimal mass square foot to the attic on a dormer. I, I think it's. Is this a single family or a two family? Two, it appears to be a two family. I think there's two units in the building. There are two units. That's correct. Sorry about and, that. And any occupancy in the basement? Uh, there's no drawings for the basement because the drawings are specific only to the attic, so I can't get to that. Uh, the basement is the basement is not occupied. The the um, first the, where there's one unit on the first floor, and then the second and proposed third floor would be the and second. That, and what's the proposed size of that second unit, and how many bedrooms? Uh, there would be three total bedrooms. There are three total bedrooms now. There would be four bedrooms. Um, the total square footage of um, currently right now, oh, the, the proposed square footage would be 4,621 square feet. And what's the proposed size of the addition? Uh, well, it's not, it's already existing. We're, we're proposing to add a dormer, which would increase the square footage by about 300 square feet. Okay, 300 square foot addition. Um, any questions from the board? Because I checked with Mr. Robinson. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support support or in opposition of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Udra Nochi, and I'm the mayor's liaison to the neighborhood of Rosendale. Um, we held a meeting for 12 by Still Terrace at um, 718, August 18th. Um, Neighbors seem to be generally in support of this project. They were in contact with the closest neighborhood association, and I believe we received three um, letters of support. 
And at this moment, we What's would the, like to- Sorry, what, what is the neighborhood association there? Lana. Um, you know, I was speaking with a board member at Lana. Um, their their um, boundaries go uh, up uh, Belgrade. Yes, but we have, my office has them reach out to the closest one. So that was the closest to them. Yeah, yeah, they, they're surprised at that. But anyway, um, let's see, um, anybody else with a raised hand? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Jordan Afria is here from Council of Ricardo Royal's office. I'd like to go on record in support of this. Thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Ambassador, are we all set? All set. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion too. Uh, is we, do we need design review, Mr. Mr. Hampton? Uh, not if Mr. Robinson doesn't think so. I'm good. <laughs> I think it's fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Is there <laughs> Second. Second. Fortune. Aye. Brigiro. Aye. Alec. Aye. Gong. Aye. Robinson. Aye. Araujo is also in support, so motion carries. Thank you very much, Madam Chair and members of the board. Appreciate it. Following the next two cases, calling DOA 135 2495, 420 to 438 Rutherford Avenue. There's a companion case, BOA 135 2508, 440 to 458. Rutherford Avenue. This is before 2438. This is new construction of a three story steel structure with common roof deck. The building that includes 99,500 square feet of office research and development with accessory small storage of flammable liquids, gases, core, and shell. The violation of Article 62, Section 17, Research Laboratory is additional use. Article 62, Section 17, product development, prototype development is conditional, and Article 62, Section 18, the build of height, dimensional regulation. This is 440, 458, Rutherford. This is an ad ancillary parking, 420, Rutherford Ave. Violations Article 62, Section 17, parking lot is conditional, and Article 62, Section 17, ancillary parking is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Jay Eigerman, Ruben Junius, and Rose, 112 Water Street in Boston. Uh, with me also is the, the team to answer questions, architect uh, Alan Yanni. Uh, before I get started, there was an error in the mail notice that I want to address uh, that flagged accessory toxic waste handling, and that was, that was not, that's not proposed at the site. As you heard, there is accessory storage of flammables. Uh, by right, you could do up to 30,000 gallons, but inside we're doing a 5,000 gallon storage for the emergency generator. Uh, so I, su a, I suppose that was cited as uh, one kitten caboodle, so it's okay. Got it. So tell us, begin by telling us what the zoning district is and what yes. the size of the lot is at 420 to 438 Rutherford. <clears throat> yes, if we go to the next slide, please. The existing lot is 55,745 feet, um, so it's uh, uh, you'll see it at the right hand side there. It's right now a self storage building, 420 Rutherford. And the existing building is about 40,000 square feet on that over acre lot. Next slide, please. This is a local industrial subdistrict in Charlestown. So it's the new, new Rutherford local industrial. And in fact, the intersecting street is called Bunker Hill Industrial Park. That's the name of the street. You'll see that's the existing building shown to the right is a, a condo, a residential condo that is part of the Hood Park PDA. Everything to the north of us is part of that planned development area. Next slide, please. The proposed building uh, will we'll raise the uh, self storage 99,500. The FAR is 1.8, which is by right. Uh, you could go up to two, but we have a big site, we don't need that. The height, however, is limited to 45 feet, and we're doing 48 feet to the cornice line, and then there's a 20-foot foot mechanical penthouse, and the roof coverage will be limited to one-third. However, there's a provision in Charlestown uh, of 10%, so we need zoning relief to go to the 33 and a third. As you heard, there's ancillary parking, I'll show in the next slide, of 50 spaces for the building. Next slide, please. So this is a site plan of the owner, related deal, also owns 440 Rutherford and that parking area in the back shown in blue are the 50 parking spaces that will be dedicated to the proposed laboratory building 
and the remaining 68 will be used by 440 Rutherford. Next slide, please. This shows the roof condition. This was an important aspect uh, working with the BPDA and the neighbors to the north uh, be, in order to minimize the impact on their views. So you'll see in the lower right hand corner, there's a green space uh, in the uh, northeasterly corner in order to shape this thing so that it's, it's uh, uh, acceptable to the neighbors. Next slide, please. Now, is this build, build, being built on spec or do you have um, a tenant in place? Spec, it's a spec building now. Okay, because I'm just trying to figure out. So when I think about product development prototype, um, I would be concerned about the emissions. Um, <clears throat> and so can you respond to that? Yes, and uh, we have a co-consultant with us, David Vitale, who can give more detail. Um, there, this is all going to meet state and local regulations on air control, um, air quality control. The uh, kind of users will be limited. There are four gradations of laboratory space, one through four under the CDC. Uh, this will be limited to BSL two. It will be no higher than two. And in fact, uh, so mostly working with cells under microscope. Um, and if, if you need more detail on the kind of regulations uh, that are put in by the state and the local, David could answer that question. No, I, th I think we do have an understanding of that. So it's BSL two, which is good. Um, and did you and tell us about the residential abutters? Uh, yes, we can go to the maybe the next slide. So the residential abutters are to the northeast. You'll see uh, an alleyway known as Half Pint Way. Um, so those residential abutters are part of the Hood Park uh, PDA, where also laboratory is allowed and exists. It's by right in the PDA, whereas in the local industrial uh, district, you need a conditional use permit. Um, the height of that building, uh, uh, maybe go to the next slide, this one isn't that helpful, um, is about 83 feet to its highest point and about uh, 75 feet to its cornice. The highest point of our building is 71, and that's deliberate, we wanted to be a little bit lower. And this slide shows there will be improvements. We worked with the BPDA and uh, BTD, they have a comprehensive plan to upgrade Rutherford Avenue. We'll do our part in front, and there's also uh, some additional uh, cash exactions they need for other locations on the avenue. Is there a lead uh, level for industrial buildings? Yes, we're targeted goal. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are, are good. I, I think it, uh, they've done a nice job trying to knit this uh, size building in adjacent to the, the residential. And I think the streetscape, as you see on the screen, I think is, is a, will be nice. So uh, no real questions on the proposed project. I think it fits in quite nicely. Um, any questions from the board? And this is not in a flood zone? No, it's actually not. Uh, this was upland historically, but it is in the coastal resilience. So it will comply with the coastal resilience uh, to be elevated. Okay, and what does that mean specifically for a lab? Uh, for a lab, there will be no, uh, no chemicals allowed uh, below, I believe, uh, 21 feet uh, Boston City base. So it has to be elevated up in case there's a, a flood event. Um, but also there's a containment. Boston Fire Department and other departments make sure that if there's a spill, say of those flammable, uh, of the fuel for the uh, a generator, that it's contained in the building and can't get out. So all those, all those, all the mechanical stuff would be above 21 feet. So that's right. And I think, I, I think I misspoke. I think it's actually two feet above 21, that's the be about 19, I'm sorry. Yeah. Three feet, okay, got yeah. it. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, as you heard from the applicant, majority of the abutters within 300 feet are uh, primarily industrial. Um, at this time, our office is unaware of any neighborhood concerns. Thank you. I have a concern and I'm on as the public. Hold on, please. The, the, the ambassador will get back, will get to you, okay? Good, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Perez representing the Carpenters Union. On behalf of hundreds of our members that live and work across the city of Boston, 
when I vote record of support of this project. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have one letter of support. We do have two letters of opposition. One was about trees and the other was about the toxic, but I think Mr. Eigenman explained that. Okay, um, Ms. Ambassador, go ahead. Um, Mark. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the board. My name is Mark Rosenshine. I'm a 20 year Charlestown resident and also uh, work at the Hood Park plant and assisting them with their real estate development. Just wanted to speak in support of the project. We are the immediate direct abutter north. Um, and as was noted in the presentation, the Harvey, which is our residential building immediately abuts the project. We've had extensive working conversations with the folks that related. They've done a really good job of keeping us up to speed on the project and the design discussed uh, the residential. They came and met with all of the residents from the Harvey um, and gave them a lot of information about the construction process. Um, we're aware of the mitigation measures, including the, the laundromat, which is very important to Charlestown. And so just wanted to speak in support both of the project and the process that the related folks went to as their direct butter. Thank you for your time. Alana. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions. The first is for um, Jason oh, Rivera. Sorry, Ms. Ms. Hines, uh, will you put your name and in the address on the record? And at this point, we we um, know uh, verbally because uh, this is being also um, so. So put your name and address on the record. And this is not a time for uh, cross cross examining. So to no, speak. I just have a few questions. I just I just, I just want you to mm -hmm. state uh, if you are in support, if you are in opposition, and what your issues are, okay? Sure, no problem. My name is Joanna Hines. I live on High Street in Charlestown. Um, I'm also on the Neighborhood Council, though I don't speak for the whole council. I speak for myself and many of my constituents. I have a quite, I'm concerned about the term local industrial district because the neighborhood is in the process of something called Plan Charlestown, and I'm curious as to when that industrial district status was approved. I also drove by today after looking at a satellite image of the property from, I guess, a year ago, and it seems that there have been a handful of mature trees taken down, and I'm, curious, I'm wondering when that happened, if there was a public process around that. I'm also um, concerned about the fact that there has been no land study done for this project. It turns out that all of Rutherford Ave sits on top of the Middlesex Canal, which is listed as a national historic um, piece of land on the National Register of Historic Places. So I think it's really important that land study be done so that the developer doesn't get caught up um, when, it, when it is a big deal, because it's going to be. Um, and then the green space. You know, the pictures, it's just so important as far as like gaining trust and buy-in from the community that there's like, you know, that, that, that the pictures speak for the truth. And the pictures that you just showed um, show mature trees along the edge that from my eye are at least 16 diameter or higher. And I have not heard anything about planting 16 inch diameter trees along that edge. So I think there needs to be some clarity and some, um, you know, honesty about what the plan is for those trees because I don't, I don't believe, and I haven't heard anything about mature trees being transplanted along that edge. There's also a lot of open space surrounding the building. No, this is my my, my last concern. Okay. Is there a limit on concerns? I mean, I'm the only person here. I've been on the phone for three and a half hours. No, I think it's, no. as a public process, we should be given a chance to speak. No. No, I got it, but this has been through an Article 80 process. I know, and I'm bringing up things that are now coming up because there have been steps skipped, and I think on the record, and I'm glad this is recorded, that needs to be um, made clear. And I'm, and I just want you to know that a lot of people uh, in town sorry. are talking about it. Sorry. And then, and yes, then my other question is, it, how would, how does the developer know that this is going to be cells under microscope if there's no tenant in place? And what is the guarantee that that is the sort of tenant that will be in place? I thought you asked some good questions about that, Madam Chair, and I'm uh, following up about the, um, the tenant in place, because that's also something that came up at every public meeting I was at. So there is a lot of opposition to this, and I think it's important that we hear the letter and not just be told that there was a letter by the BPA. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, um, so, Councillor, can you please 
respond. Um, sure, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll address as many of the points as I can within time. Yep. Uh, we, we don't have a tenant, but because it's limited to BSL-2, as I say, there are these four gradations. Uh, typically, uh, when you only go up to uh, bioscience level two, it, it sells under microscopes in, in short. Can't guarantee that, but, but it, let me just it ask, not be uh, more meters. Let me just ask you, because we've seen this in other places in the city, um, sure. but, but you know, sure. this also opens you up to do other things like robotics or something else. That's right. That's yeah. right. It could. Yeah. yeah. So the, the use designation. I, to use uh, vernacular, it could be a dry lab or it could be a wet lab. The, the cells under microscopes, shorthand I'm using, would be the wet lab. But this approval, this conditional use, would allow things that have nothing to do with biology, too. It could be robotics or mechanical or, or computers. That's true. Um, on the, the landscape plan, uh, I don't think the, the specimen trees will be brought in. They'll be planted and they'll grow. But I want to emphasize. We worked very closely with BTD and BPDA on their uh, Charlestown plan. So everything that's proposed on that sidewalk was worked out with city officials and we're taking our direction with, from them. Uh, uh, another concern I think was uh, the Middlesex Canal that was analyzed. We're aware that historically the Middlesex Canal was uh, in this vicinity and through the PNF, the Article 80 process, we did have historians and preservation architects analyze that with the city. So I, I don't think there's a concern. And remember, it's an, there's an existing building there now. So the site has been disturbed historically. But the uh, open so space is not, uh, and you're picking uh, up this more. Is, this is not a conversation. Ms. Ambassador, can you um, mute everybody but the board and the person who's speaking? Thank you. Um, so uh, let me just get clarity. So the Mid Middlesex sure. Canal, has that been filled in or could it be at some yes. point uh, vulnerable to a collapse or something like that? I, I don't, I, nothing was identified like that. Again, the, uh, and the building here is, is uh, not, a, not a skyscraper. It's, it's not, not high rise construction, but it was filled in historically. Uh, so there, it, there's difficult to, find, uh, difficult to find trace of it now. But yes, that was analyzed. And of course, uh, soil engineering is going to be crucial uh, for any uh, building permit. So we don't have a concern there. On open space, I, I, I want to emphasize, again, this building is replacing an existing building. And the parking area in the back behind 440 is going to remain a parking area. Um, and in fact, uh, in working with the BPDA, part of Plan Charlestown, they wanted to open up that half pint way alleyway. So that will remain an alleyway going north south. Theoretically, it could, with PIC approval, it could continue into Hood Park. So we're actually not covering uh, more land. Um, any other questions, Madam Chair? No, I think that covers everything. And just to clarify, um, that you're not requesting approval, approval for Article 62, Section 17, accessory storage, or transfer of toxic waste. No, ma'am. It's, it's an error. It's forbidden use. Okay. It's, it is forbidden. Okay. So, given that, and you're proposing, I'm looking at the two parcels, and you're proposing screening and buffering at 440, 458 Rutherford. Right. And the parking, the parking actually house. straddles the lot line. So, you need a conditional use for ancillary shared parking. Okay. Okay. So, given all that information, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPDA design review. I'll second that, Eric. Well, hold on. May I, may I also have, um, as part of the motion, non-approval, not a denial of approval of that Article uh, 62, Section 17, which is the toxic waste, so that it's just completely taken off um, from, from any discussion in the future? Okay, um, so that's a two-part motion then uh, to uh, um, oppose the, uh, the approval, well, to deny approval of Article 62, Section 17 issue and to approve the uh, other requested variances uh, with BPDA design review. And, pl and please, on um, when whoever is doing the minutes, make sure that articles 62 section 17 the one that mark referred to is specific to the accessory storage 
our transfer of toxic waste and not the product development. Um, is there a second? Second, Eric. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Ehrlich? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo is also in support, so motion carries um, on both those addresses and for both those um, both those decisions. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 135 8847 to Wombach Street. This is a change of art from office to four units to office and six units. Build a new addition, renovate the existing building with new finishes. <clears throat> the violation is Article 9, Section 1, extension of a non conforming use. Article 50, Section 28, a six family use is forbidden. Article 50, Section 29, the additional lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the flood area ratio is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, the bill has excessive in feet. Article 50, Section 29, use open space is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, front yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the rear yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 43, off-street parking and loading, insufficient. Seven and six is provided. Article 50, Section 43, off-street parking and loading, location, one space located, the front yard of Wombach Street. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, my name is Arthur Guy Pratt. Uh, my address is 454 Lowell Avenue. Uh, I am the uh, architect for the project. So, can you hear me? So, Mr. Pratt, yes. Can you describe? Can you please describe the project? Um, yes. And, mm -hmm. and and tell us what these additions are, um, and how you are changing the occupancy to include those six, those additional two units. Yes. First of all, the existing condition um, as it exists is that uh, the first floor is currently uh, occupied by the owner, who is a contract construction business, occupies the entire first floor. The second and third floor is this is, is this is this Thomas construction? Yep, yep it is. Oh got it. So I know so I know the building. Okay. Yeah. Now how are the two units going to be worked in there? Yes, yeah, first of all what's happening is that the first of the uh, the first floor is existing which has business. It, it, it occupies the entire first floor. That's gonna be relo that's gonna be relocated to the you know, sorry, Frank is calling me now. <laughs> Frank, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on Zoom. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the uh, basement level, uh, Frank's business is going to be relocated from the first floor to the basement, and it's going to be substantially reduced to about 900 square feet. The additional space in the basement is going to be used for uh, office storage space for his business, and also for unit spaces for the uh, all six units above. Now, the first floor, is going to be occupied by uh, two two units. Uh, those units are approximately uh, each uh, 1,150 square feet. They are three bedroom units, uh, two baths, with the living dining combined and kitchen area being a large open open space uh, open space area. Uh, the second floor is going to. Uh, exactly mirror the exactly the same size as the uh, first floor again it's going to have two units each each unit again is going to be 1150 square feet with each unit having uh, uh, two, two, uh, two full baths uh, well one full bath so, 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 mr. so mr pratt so basically all are three bedrooms and all are about a thousand one fifty square feet Yes. Okay, so tell us about the parking. Where is the parking supposed to be located? The parking is going to be located in the rear of the building off of Wombat Street. And we propose six, uh, six parking spaces. I think the code calls for three based on the office space being reduced. However, Frank's use of the uh, basement for his business is going to be very minimal. It's going to be a small office space. He's, he's downsizing. so. The need for the seven spaces, at uh, least extra space, uh, may not be a problem. The six spaces. So uh, hold on, hold on. Tell us which uh, drawing we should look at to understand to how the parking one. is going to work. Can you go back to page one? Yes. Yes. There. Again, uh, to the rear of the building, 
uh, assuming that the front of the building is facing Hill and Hill Avenue, and the right side of the building actually faces one back. Uh, there will be two parking spaces off of one back. Now, the, the parking uh, area is actually existing and paved with, again, with existing curb cuts, uh, one curb cut off of uh, one back street providing access to the six parking spaces with a, uh, a new trash enclosure added. Okay, I got it. So that's why they're calling it a front yard parking is because it's a corner lot and space six is um, could, could be construed as front yard parking. Um, and tell us about the, is there a roof deck proposed? No, there isn't. Uh, the, th the third floor actually is an existing gable roof. If we could, uh, an existing gable roof. The existing gable roof will be uh, uh, demolished and taken off, and a new roof in, uh, uh, installed, a new mansard roof is going to be installed, which makes it really, uh, uh, man the reason for the mansard is that it would be consistent with some of the larger uh, residential building on Warren Street, which are which has which have mansard roofs. So the idea is to blend this building in with the existing uh, residential buildings on on Warren Street. Plans, Mr. Robinson. Uh, um, I, I think the, the uh, generally the plans are fine. I guess I'm probably have a little bit of a not uh, we're taking a, a beautiful victorian that looks like in some pretty good shape and take, taking all the detail off and creating a box is what it appears to be doing to meet all the requirements of the proposal so i guess i'm a little bit uh, disappointed in terms of the direction it's going away from the proposal but i don't have any questions on the actual proposed scope of work in terms of the conversion um, just more the method of how it's going about so. got it no. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Keisha Santana from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, and a butters meeting was held on April 6th. Um, and the applicants met with the abutters and also met with Garrison Trotter. Um, and work with them um, to receive their support. Um, they, a letter of support from Garrison Trotter was um, submitted to the board. Um, and at this time, um, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Ms. Ambassador, are we all good? All good, uh, Madam Chair, no hands raised. May I um, have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve with BPDA design review um, to try to maintain um, as much detail in, as possible of the existing building. Is there a second? Uh, I guess I'll second that. Okay, um, Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Olick? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Nay. Nay. Araujo also in support. Um, so motion carries. Uh, Mr. Pratt, you've been before us before. Just make sure, and I know Mr. Thomas is a, um, a very well-known, respected, um, somebody in the construction trade, so just make sure that as many of the details of the buildings are, is maintained as possible. Uh, especially through design review. Thank you. Not a lot. We we agree. He's aware that the siding is staying the same. A lot of the window details are staying the same. And the corner treatment of some of the corners is going to stay. So he has agreed to maintain as much of the detail as possible. The only difference is changing the the roof structure. Got it. Okay. So sure. Uh, so. Um, um, so motion carries uh, on to the next case. On well, the next case, calling DOA 1365760, 183 Fuller Street. Construct a new three family dwelling. <coughs> Violation Article 65, Section 8, three family dwelling use is forbidden. Article 65, Section 8, accessory parking is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the lot area is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the fluid air ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height number of stories is excessive. 
Article 65, Section 9 in the front yard is insufficient, and Article 65, Section 9 in the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Andrew Litchfield at 22 Alpha Road in Dorchester. So tell us first the size of the lot. Um, yeah. We know the zoning is a 2F5000. Um, and tell us what you're proposing and tell us the variation uh, from the zoning that each of the violations cited, um, what, what, the vi what the violation is. Of course, of course. Uh, so I'm proposing a three family. The lot size is 4,250 square feet. Currently, um, it's a it's a empty vacant lot right now. Um, proposing um, a two bedroom on the first floor, which is 975 square feet. A two bedroom on the two bed two bath on the second floor, 975 square feet. And then a one bedroom, uh, one and a half bathroom on the third floor, which is a thousand square feet. Proposing four off-street parking spots. I'm sorry, you have your one bedroom as a thousand square feet, and your two bedrooms is nine seventy-five. Yes. Yeah, so there's a there's a a, a a nice office space in the back that goes out to um, an outdoor space. If you want to take a quick look at that, um, <clears throat> but yeah, that is so tell, the current tell us configuration. What, and we should be looking at and tell us how parking is supposed to work. Yeah, so this is the plan for the second and third floor. If you go um, back, I think two slides, it'll show you the parking configuration. Keep going back a little bit further. Right here is the, the ground floor, the parking configuration. So driveway on the left-hand side um, <clears throat> and four parking spaces in the rear. Uh, there's that one parking space that will be compact. That is um, the two decks above that to create some more outdoor open space for the uh, for the uh, new owners and then the left hand or the right hand side of the property line will be um, there's a, a couple of trees that we'll be keeping and adding a few more um, so that's that's pretty much the setup of the of the site so this is a 2f5000 so to build a one or a two, you need 5,000. You're at 4,250, and you're proposing a three family on the site, basically. Yeah, um, so, I, so- The question I have too is that, um, um, tell us about the screening and buffering on all sides, because you do have, I assume, a rear abutter and an abutter on the other side. Yes, so um, I don't know if my architect, Eric Zacherson, is here that can share a little, a little bit of the screen yes. and buffering. Yes, Andrew, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, so this is Eric Zacherson, um, 9 Sackville Street, Charlestown. Uh, we, we will be having a um, privacy fence along the driveway side, and then on the, uh, the rear of the property, there, the privacy fence will continue around the property, but uh, at the rear and on the right side, there's uh, some space for uh, some um, greenery. Um, we could potentially have some uh, smaller trees in that zone. We do not have a landscape plan at this time. Um, and it just looks like from the layout that that last parking spot, the one abutting the building is um, more than compact. I mean, um, it's just abutting somebody's window like that. Um, any options that you uh, checked out to, to accommodate the parking in a different way? We didn't, but the, um, the first floor is raised a bit above the parking uh, area. I don't have the number offhand, but um, the building itself is, is kind of a little bit above, above grade in a way that most of our projects are not. We've accommodated that by having to, in order to have a little raised porch and a ramp up to it. So the window would be, uh, I believe, would be higher than the car itself. Okay. Uh, how are the plans, um, uh, Mr. Robinson? Plans are, uh, plans are fine. And uh, again, no real proposal, uh, sorry, question about the proposal. I do think the site plan could use some work in terms of its abutting. It, it is right up against another house on the left. so. Um, I think we could put a, a good proviso on this, but no questions on the proposal. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? 
Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Eric James on behalf of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant for 183 Fuller Street had an abutters meeting on May 4th, 2022. Um, they also had a background consensus from the Dunn Association who ultimately decided to oppose the project, citing parking issues and development of buildings with too many units and bedrooms and small lots. Um, the direct abutters have given letters of two letters of support and one letter of opposition. And um, at this time, the uh, Office of Neighborhood Services is electing to defer, to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. So tell us again what the neighbor what the neighborhood association's name is and how how they they voted. My apologies. It is the Dorchester Unified Neighborhood Association or the Dunn Association for short, and they voted to oppose the project citing parking issues and development of buildings with too many uh, units. Thank you. Chair, Secretary, here we do have a few letters of support. Okay. Ms. Ambassador, any more raised hands? No raised hands, Madam Chair. Um, um, Mr. Hampton from the BPDA, was there a recommendation from the uh, there was, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. We recommended uh, approval with design review. Pretty thank straightforward. You. Yep. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. May I Sorry have a motion, to, please? Oh. Sorry to interrupt, but I don't think my hand was, my hand raised was seen. Uh, my name is BJ Oswaldo. So, yeah, please put your name and address on the record. Yes, my name is uh, BJ Oswaldo. I am the director of civic engagement for the District Board City Council, uh, Council Brian Morrell. Um, and we would like to oppose this project just due to the communities uh, or the community organization of the Dorchester Unified Neighborhoods uh, uh, disapproval of the project. Uh, a lot of the same things were stated with the accessory parking, the project being too large and not really fitting the, uh, not really fitting, fitting the neighborhood. Uh, so we would like to oppose this project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so given all that information, may I have a motion please? I'll make a motion to approve. Um, I think it does uh, generally fit within the context. I think that it does need some BPA design review for the site planning. Um, and a, a, I think a good look at the parking configuration and layout um, makes some sense to me. Is there a second? Sir. Uh, Madam Chair, before you put it to a vote, Mr. Robinson, since yep. they have four, and that compact one is kind of quirky where it is. Yep. If we were to remove it, just saying hypothetically, it would not trigger a violation because they're really required to have three. three. So I want right. to uh, put that out there because in case that does come up during design review, it would not trigger coming back to you guys for zoning relief. I just wanted I, to make that clear. I'm comfortable with that because I think mm -hmm. that might help the site plan. Okay, thank you. So there's a, um, a motion, there's a second. Um, Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Nay. Ehrlich? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Raujo is nay, so it's denied without prejudice. Following the next case. Following DOA 126 3429 329 Gallivan Boulevard. This is raise the existing six unit structure, construct a new nine unit, eight unit, unit and a residential building with nine off street parking spaces, and increase to 11 spaces, nine, with nine, nine off street parking. The violation is 65. Fuck! Article 65, Section 2, conforming an existing building alignment. Article 65, Section 8. Multifamily use is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the fluid air ratio is accessible. Article 65, Section 9, the building has accessible stories. Article 65, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record. Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Spitz, Adams and Marancy, with the business address of 168 H Street, first floor, South Boston. Uh, with me today is the owner. Oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Spitz, this is not necessarily referring to you, but I just need to let all pe all applicants here who are here for 1130s that this is a six-member board, and you need five members 
um, support for your project to fly. Um, so you have the option, if you so desire, to take an administrative deferral for a later date when there is a full seven-member board. Um, Mr. Um, Spitz, if you're going to go ahead, Councilor Spitz, if you're going to go ahead, uh, tell us why you were deferred the last time and uh, proceed with your presentation. We, we are going to proceed. Uh, the last time for the deferral, uh, the description was inaccurate. It was from the original proposal, not the revised proposal. And that's what um, Secretary Fortune just actually read into record again. Um, so we have the updated uh, list here, which was properly mailed out, uh, describing uh, the changes made uh, to the actual plans going from eight units in 11 parking spaces versus the nine units and what was read into the record. And and so the violations that are that were read are still the violations that stand. Yes, I believe I believe okay. still they, they, they kind of went pretty fast. Um, but again, okay. I, I was notified. In yeah. The, okay. Because we we did get the eight. We understand okay. it's proposed eight units and it's proposed 11 spaces. So go ahead. Great. And describe to us what's what's in front of us. Great. Joining me today is the owner, Francis Clegg, as well as James Christopher from 686 Architects. Uh, this proposal is to raise the existing dilapidated six-unit structure and erect a new three-story building with eight dwelling units, 11 off-street, and 11 below-grade parking spaces on a corner lot, utilizing an existing curb cut off of Hutchinson Street on an 8,385-square-foot lot. Proposal is located within a 2F5000 subdistrict. Six units, uh, the, uh, um, correct me, uh, the eight units will range from approximately 1,060 square feet to 1,355 square feet. The basement will consist of 11 below grade parking spaces. Four of those parking spaces will be at 18 feet by seven feet and six inches. And seven of those will be at 20 feet by eight feet, six inches. Okay, just let's back up for a minute. So this <clears throat> proposed elevator building, How, what's, what's the breakdown on bedrooms? Uh, bedrooms, they're going to be seven two-bedroom units and one three-bedroom unit. The first floor will consist of three two-bedrooms with balconies uh, facing Hutchinson Street. Uh, the second floor will consist of three two-bedrooms with balconies again facing Hutchinson Street. On the third floor, uh, there'll be one three-bedroom and one two-bedroom. Both will have balconies. The third floor, uh, from the plans that you'll see, is there. The third floor level is set back uh, from Galvin Boulevard. And is there a roof deck proposed? Yes, there, there are balconies up there, which we refer to um, on the third floor. So the the front balcony will be approximately about 27 feet four inches by five feet six inches. <clears throat> That's going to be specifically allocated exclusively to unit number seven. Uh, the other two, which will be on the rear and the side, are going to be exclusively to unit eight. Um, the rear one will be approximately four, 14 feet by two inches and by 10 feet, nine inches. And then the side one will be five foot, six inches by 39 feet, six inches. Um, okay, again, uh, Councilor, just let's ask you a couple more questions. Um, tell us about the, the, the yards that are abutting um, <coughs> the the abutting buildings um tell us what the distance is from this proposed building <clears throat> to your abutters yeah so so on if, if i'm looking at the building head on from galvin street to the right of the property on galvin so tell us so please tell us which drawing is the best to look at um i'm going to refer to uh, uh go go uh up one a four Actually, if you go to the, the first drawing round chair, the L1, I think that's the easiest way to talk about um, <clears throat> setback. Oh, site plan, there you go, right there. Site plan shows it as well. So <clears throat> when facing the building on the left side to our butter, we're 11 foot, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I can't read that, 11 foot uh, nine, I believe. Then the building has a 25 foot setback along Gallivan, which steps forward to 15 feet at the corner. And then as we come around the corner, we go down to uh, six feet uh, at that bay, that first bay. The general setback along that is eight feet. And then to the rear yard, uh, we have a five foot setback. Uh, and from the abutting buildings uh, on Gallagher Boulevard to our left, 
Uh, I believe that the setback on the opposite side the, to our butter to his building is about 10 feet. So tell us about Hutchinson. What's the distance between the property line to the building? <laughs> From our building to the property line is uh, five feet, Madam Chair. Okay, and what's, so it looks like your abutting building on the other side is about five feet. It's about the same, that's correct. Okay. Um, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Um, plans are good um, in terms of what's being proposed. I, I was wondering the same, um, if maybe this could just slide toward Galvin a little bit <laughs> to give some a little bit more relief toward the rear of butter. It would be one of my questions to uh, the proponent because I do think there is some space there that might be better utilized for the rear of butter just to give them a little real relief. Um, <clears throat> the building does step back there, so it's not a hard wall. I see there's some balconies and so um, that was kind of really my only question if we could maybe massage. And the other one was on the 20 foot curb cut. I guess I just don't know. It, it seems big, but maybe that's what's needed for that. So th those are my only two real questions. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Robinson. Uh, on the curb cut, uh, it's existing and, and we're matching that um, opening. So we just felt like it was a viable um, uh, entry and access point. There's no parking on that side of the street as well. Um, <clears throat> on the siting of the building, uh, we can certainly accommodate addressing it more towards Galvin Boulevard through the community process. Um, we, we discussed a lot of the, the corner and the nose of the building. We had several iterations of design. Uh, and this was the one that the abutters and the civic group seemed to like the most. So that's the direction that we went in. But there is certainly space to address the site. Thank you. No other questions. Any other questions? Any questions from the board? Yeah, I realize that this has been reduced from nine to eight units, but looking around the neighborhood, that seems way out of character with uh, with the uh, the other buildings, um, uh, other abutting buildings. Am I wrong about that? Um, this is the largest site in that area, Mr. Ehrlich. There are several multi-families in the area. Um, the building that exists in a much smaller footprint is six units. Um, so they're, they're in the immediate area. I don't think that there's a uh, similar building, but you know, working with with the site that we have and, and the existing uh, use, um, and that it was supported by the abutters and the civic group, we felt it was appropriate. In a very close walking proximity to uh, the train local train station as well in Ashmont. No, I roll my eyes every time I hear that. Sorry, Councillor. Um, any? Uh, I'm sorry. I was a little unclear. There is no roof deck but there are balconies, right? That's correct, Madam Chair. There's no common roof deck on the upper roof. Uh, on the on the setbacks of the uh, roof of the second floor uh, are where the, uh, the balconies are. Okay, and um, is this 100% electric building? Uh, we haven't gone through the engineering. It's not designed to be that way as of yet, okay. but uh, we will certainly accommodate everything that we can, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Quinn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office held a meeting for the proposal in November of last year and June of this year. Abutters initially mentioned concerns regarding parking on Gallivan Boulevard, which the proposal proponent has helped address by reducing the units and adding parking. A butter also expressed concern regarding the area facing their home um, and the lack of uniform green space on the other side. Um, the Lower Mills Civic Association has written a letter of support. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Madam Chair, Secretary, uh, um, we do have those letters that the mayor's office just spoke of. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's office, we'd like to go in record in support of the applicant. Um, Mr. Hampton, did the BPDA have a recommendation? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. We recommended uh, approval with design review on this case. Okay. Uh, okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at large, Michael Clarity, Council for Record Support. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Ambassador, that covers everybody. Yes, no raised hands, Madam Chair. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve um, 
with BPA design review for, I guess, building siding um, to see if we can uh, give it a little relief to that rear butter. Um, and then also, I think uh, a nice landscape plan will help this uh, project as well. So. I'll second that. Um, Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Joe, uh, aye. Alec? Um, reluctantly, aye. It seems too dense, but. Dong? Uh, Got it. Aye. Uh, Dong? Aye. Uh, Robinson? Aye. Arauja is also I, so motion carries with those provisos and those concerns. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Following the next case, calling DOA 1279637-185 London Street. Madam Chair, we have a letter from the applicant. They are withdrawing, so I'm going to make a motion to deny without prejudice. Second. All those, um, Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson. Aye. Joe also aye. Motion carries. Following the next case, calling DOA 128 0392 333 Freeport Street. This is the change auction to have his two family converted to a mixed use with first floor commercial space for body passing, jewelry, art gallery, and local artists. The second floor will be for residential use. A violation of Article 65, Section 15, use is forbidden. Name and address for the record. Is the applicant here for this um, for this project? Madam Chair, no one. Um, okay, no let's. One was in for the pre-check in. Okay, let's move to the next one. To Jones Island, please. Call, calling VOA 129 8409. 21 Jones Avenue. This is erect a new three-story, three-family dwelling on a vacant lot. Violation. Article 60, Section 9, the additional lot areas is insufficient. Article 60, Section 41.1, conforming with an existing building allotment. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Attorney Joseph Feaster from the law firm of Dane Torpy, 175 State Street, 15th floor, Boston. Um, I have also, be, should be as a panelist, should be the architect, Christopher Drew, on the call as well are the owners of the, of the uh, lot, uh, and that's Joseph Snow and Lucian McPherson. I believe I'm going to have uh, architect Drew uh, speak to the the proposal, but I believe that he's going to say that that last um, um, Mr. Fortune, there's only one violation that we have. We have a new letter that's dated July 13, 2022, but I'm going to ask. Uh, uh, Mr. Drew to speak to that, that the one with the Article 60 with the modal uh, conformity to the building alignment uh, is not no longer an issue in this particular matter and we would ask that it not be considered here. But Mr. Drew, can you proceed with the with the presentation? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Pista. Uh, Chris Drew from 686 Architects, uh, 1156 Dorchester Ave. Uh, what we're proposing is a free family uh, residence on an existing uh, vacant lot. Uh, pretty simple, each unit itself is three bedrooms, two baths, about 1,194 uh, square feet. Uh, the first floor will be fully accessible. Uh, the basement will consist of storage and mechanicals, and we have uh, three off-street parking spaces in the rear. Um, our only violation is the additional lot area. Although it is a three of 5,000, it is one of those weird areas where it is a three of 5,000, but it, it asks for an additional 2,500 square feet for the existing, for the three family lot itself. So what, um, what's the size of this lot, Mr. Drew? The size of the lot is 5,315 square feet. Okay, got it. Um, three bedrooms, uh, how many baths did you say? Uh, two baths per unit. So a massive okay. suite and then a common bath. Okay, and there's three, and is that um, curb cardiac? cut existing? I know, that would be a new, new curb cut. Okay, and um, tell us, so you have then with this drawing met conformity with building alignment? Correct, yes. When the original application was filed, um, the surveyor hadn't had a chance to do that work yet, and we had gotten it filed to get it in, and then we subsequently um, amended the plans just to show new conformity, and the okay. violation was removed. 
Okay, thank you. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. Extremely straightforward, no questions. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair, we do have that letter it's dated July 13th, so there is only one violation. Thank you. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Madam, Madam Chair, this is attorney fee, so I just wanted to put on the record that the, my, uh, my client did meet with the Woodrow Avenue Neighborhood Association. Uh, there we have support from uh, the residents at 20, 39, 40, and 21 uh, Jones Avenue. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thank you. Thank Madam you. Lord, we do have support letters, Secretary here. Uh, is anybody here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services? Yep. Good morning, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board, the applicant for 21 Jones. So please, um, please, please uh, put your name and address, uh, your, at least your name on the record. Sorry, uh, my, uh, Eric James here for the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the applicant for 21 Jones Ave had an abutters meeting on May 5th, 2022. They also met with the Woodrow Ave Neighborhood Association on March 17th, 2022. The Neighborhood Associations decided to support um, and they also have two letters of support and five letters, no, one letter of support and one letter of opposition, uh, one letter of support signed by four butters. Thank you. And at this moment, we are aiming to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at Large, Michael Clarity, Council for Going Record Support. <laughs> There are no raised hands, Madam Chair. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPDA design review. I'll second that, Eric. Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Alec? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Araujo also in support, so motion carries. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, Madam morning. Chair, members of the board. Calling the next two cases, calling DOA 1330429, 10 Woodford Street, the companion case BOA 1330431, Woodford Street. This is for 10 Woodford, directing new four story residential with four dwelling units, roof deck, an existing vacant lot. Violations Article 50, Section 28, a multifamily dwelling is forbidden. Article 50, Section 29, the lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, lot width is insufficient. Article 50 is section 29, lot frontage is insufficient. Article 50, section 29, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 50, section 29, the building height is excessive. Article 50, section 29, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 50, section 29, usual open space is insufficient. Article 50, section 29, the front yard is insufficient. Article 50, section 29, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 50, section 29, the rear yard is insufficient. And Article 50, section 43, cross street parking is insufficient. Uh, Madam Chair, for the next two cases, I will be recusing myself. Both, both Woodford? Yes. Okay, so just, is there, is there somebody here representing Bolney Capital? Yes, hi, Madam Chair, Jeff Drago. Uh, Mr. Drago, so this is a six member board without um, Mr. Ruggiero, it's a five member board. Um, and you would need all five members in support. Um, given the situation, you may request an administrative deferral or you may proceed. We will proceed, Madam Chair. Okay. Madam Chair, 34 Woodford Street has the same purpose and the same violation, so I'm not going to read them into the record. Thank you, save your breath. That makes sense. Okay, um, if you are proceeding, please, um, um, Tell us why you were deferred before um, and tell us what's being proposed and talk us through it. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So last time there was also a short board. That was the reason, a smaller board. That is why we, we deferred last time. Um, we, uh, again, Jeff Drago, Drago and Scano, the business address of 11 Beacon Street, representing Volney Capital. We also have um, Eric Zacherson from Context as the architects in the project. As was mentioned, uh, the, they are identical uh, proposals for both 10 and 34. The proposal is to erect new f uh, a new four unit uh, condominium building at both 10 and 34. Uh, yeah, so please start off and tell us what the zoning district is. 
So it's a 3F4000, Madam Chair. Um, we are proposing four units on each vacant parcel. They're and what's both. the square footage at 10 and what's the square yeah. footage at 34? So 10 is 2,643 square feet. 34 is 2,569 square feet. Sorry, 2,500 and what? 69. Okay, so the basic zoning for one or two family is 4,000, and you're coming in with four units on 2,000 square foot lot. It's a 3F 4,000. Um, Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. Hampton, uh, 4,000, is that for three units or one and two? I will double check uh, for you in two minutes. Okay, in the meantime, go ahead, Mr. Um, sure. Go ahead. So the, the project at 10 Woodford, Madam Chair, that is going to propose four unit condo. One of those units, the uh, developer has agreed with the community uh, for a deed restricted affordable unit at 80% AMI as part of this project. Um, the uh, layout of that building, the first floor will have main entrance and unit one. Uh, which is a thousand square foot, two bedroom, two bath. That is the affordable unit. Uh, unit two is a thousand square foot, two bedroom, two bath with a front deck. Uh, unit three is a thousand square foot, two bed, two bath with a front deck. And unit four is a thousand square foot, two bed, two bath with a front deck. That unit would also have a roof deck um, accessed by the rear stair. Um, the uh, building at 34 Woodford. Oh, hold, on, hold on, tell us how par parking is supposed to work. So there is there's no parking on the site, Madam Chair. So it's a, it's a shorter lot. And so also that means there'll be no um, loading. Loading will be off the street. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So go ahead to 34, please. 34 is also four units, um, similar layout, identical layout. Uh, the units are slightly larger. Uh, they're 1,275 square foot, two bedroom, two bath. They all have front deck with an exclusive roof deck on the top floor. The roof decks are 480 square feet for both of the buildings. And is there an affordable at 40, 34? There isn't. There's one affordable for the whole uh, eight units. Okay. Um, and is, then there's no parking on this either? There is not, no. Both of these are vacant lots now, as they stay. Okay, um, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, the plans are as uh, submitted. So they look good, no questions. I mean, there's, no, it's, there's nothing surprising. It's pretty straightforward in terms of what's being proposed. So no questions on the plans. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Madam Chair, it's Jeff. I have that information. You want it? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, so in Roxbury, the three of 4,000, it's 4,000 for one or two units, and then 2,000 for each additional unit. Okay, so, um, that, uh, so that for four units, you need? The 8,000. 8,000, so this is uh, 2,643. And for the record, the BPDA uh, recommends approval with design review on these properties. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sambia. Um, let's see, is anybody here to speak and support our in opposition, Ms. Ambassador? Yes, I have one raised hand. Minor, uh, please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Ambassador. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is representing the Carpenters Union. Uh, if we are the entire membership that lives in the city of Boston wants to go and support of this project. And we really appreciate the sensitivity of the developer to our matters. Thank you. Um, no, sorry. Madam Chair, members of the board, Keisha Santana from the Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, and a butters meeting was held, and there is no opposition um, to the project. And at this point, we would like to defer judgment to the board.
Thank you. Anybody from um, anybody from the city council's office? Okay. Um, given that information, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPDA design review. I'll second that, Eric. Madam Chair, this is Tom. Uh, can I ask that the board include a proviso to identify the affordable units um, in the building that's going to be uh, whatever, whichever, whichever unit is going to be for this five lives? So I have to put that was that was unit one at ten wood foot. I'll be happy to include that in the motion. Thank you, Mr. Rose. So the motion is for approval with design review. Is there a second? I'll second, Eric. Fortune. Aye. Ruggiero. He recused. Oh, oh he sorry, recused. Sorry, that's right. Ole. Aye. Dong. Aye. Robinson. Aye. Araujo is um, extremely re reluctantly in support. Um, this is just a note to um, the attorney and Volney Capital that, in fact, uh, if the look carefully at the zoning, because this is unnecessarily creating density um, for a neighborhood that I want to make sure is not exploited in any way, especially with no parking for new construction proposed here. Um, so, um, you know, this is a pass in a certain way. Um, so it's been, um, with all the votes, approved with design review. Good luck. Madam Chair, I'm going to go back to a case we called earlier, BOA 1280392, 333 Freeport Street. Is anybody on from Freeport Street? Madam Chair, it's now 112. I'm going to make a motion to deny without prejudice. Second. I'll second that, Eric. <coughs> Fortune. Aye. Ruggiero. Aye. Oleg. Aye. Dong. Aye. Robinson. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Around you also in support, so motion carries. Madam Chair, the reconsideration, call the case BOA 117-3599-535-537B Washington Street for consideration of the board's decision to deny the conditional use permit to operate a cannabis establishment of 535-537B Washington Street, right? The applicant has requested the board to reconsider its decision in light of the relevant case law from the Massachusetts court that was not available at the time of the board's decision. Name and address for the record. Yes, hello. Uh, this is attorney Mike Ross uh, from the law firm of Prince LaBelle with the business address of One International Place in Boston. Um, the letter I submitted to you on August 5th contains um, the essential uh, arguments uh, that we wish to make. But in, in summary, uh, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, and, and good afternoon to all of you. Um, the, um, the case was heard on July 12th. Literally days after the case was heard, uh, first on July 21st and then on July 28th, uh, two significant uh, cases were um, were uh, ruled on by one the SJC and the other the Suffolk Superior Court that are directly on point uh, to this and uh, and worth uh, worth just briefly discussing. The second issue is that I submitted the 75-page traffic study, uh, which I think does a far better job of explaining what I attempted to uh, explain in a very short period of time at the July 12th hearing. And you uh, submitted you kind of this, I'm context. sorry, and you submitted this on July 5th? Uh, August 5th was the letter. I'm sorry, sure. August 5th. And okay. the, the, the traffic study, as I mentioned in the hearing, in summary, it, it, it says that there are adequate facilities that the uh, traffic uh, is not going to be overwhelmed by this facility and that the parking exists uh, in the, within the area uh, on um, publicly available uh, parking on the street. That's essentially what this says, but I, I wanted to at least submit so, with so, more time and context uh, this you, Yes, yeah, so I, I've looked at your letter, um, and so you um, are referring to the two 
decisions that came down, please tell us what their relevance is to this case that we should um, reconsider this. Uh, we should vote today whether to reconsider the case. I will, thank you. Um, so very briefly, uh, the first case uh, uh, decided on uh, July uh, 21st was called Basque v. the City of Taunton, where the City Council um, uh, voted against one applicant um, that had, due to traffic concerns, and then uh, shortly thereafter voted for a nearby applicant that actually had more severe traffic issues associated with that. And there, the SJC, which is significant, um, said that that's a legally untenable position, that in a situation where you have um, um, similarly situated applicants, which these cannabis establishments are, they're, they're very similarly situated, um, you cannot, you have to, you have to consider past decisions. Um, more so, recently... So, so tell me what the relevance is to um, distance, so what is another um, Alston case that we have looked at where there is that similarity in lack of parking um, that is um, that is relevant to this case? Right, thank you. Um, good question. Yeah, so it's, for example, HVV Massachusetts uh, Inc., which is located at 1937 Beacon Street in Brighton, um, that was approved uh, with zero parking spaces, and that's significant. Uh, the other thing that is significant is that numerous applicants come before this board and do not provide any form of traffic study. Um, they do uh, provide, in this case, we did provide a, fair, a fairly thorough traffic study. Um, as it relates to the parking, we do have four parking spaces on this site, and we have um, secure loading on this site. Uh, the other, um, and there are numerous cases, um, uh, distinctions of approved applicants uh, as compared to this particular applicant is, um, is the size of facility. Um, we know that um, the board in the past has approved smaller facilities that do not have adequate queuing. So um, I'm sorry, so is size one of the issues raised in Taunton, in the Basque versus Taunton? Or was it it was, just um, traffic? traffic was what was raised in Bass versus Taunton, but it was more specifically raised in Holland Brands, which is the second case that occurred on July 28th. And in Holland Brands versus the ZBA, um, the court stated there that in the case of the Holland Brands application, there were numerous um, amenities that the, um, that the applicant had, such as queuing area, such as parking spaces, um, such as a, a traffic study, such as a security study, um, all of which um, were deemed to be uh, more substantial than other uh, applications that had come before the board that didn't have those types of things. And here with 535 Washington Street, the size of a facility, proximity to um, a local community, all the things that one could measure when they consider uh, these items um, is, is uh, in general, um, um, has, a, has a stronger uh, set of these amenities, queuing space, uh, the fact that it does have some parking, the fact that there is available on-street parking, whereas many parts of the city there is no availability of the on-street parking uh, where approved applicants have occurred. Um, in all those cases, what we have is a, is, a, is a very strong contender and certainly one that meets the definition and the needs of the conditional use permit. Um, at the hearing on July 12th, um, I think you allowed me to kind of conclude, and I said, you know, I would just follow the conditional use permit rules. And I think there was a certain amount of um, leap of faith there because we didn't have such clear and distinct cases uh, that, that came down and basically said what these two cases said, Bask and Holland Brands. But now I come to you with an objective set of cases to say that where you have uh, a strong applicant, even though there might be uh, say neighborhood opposition. Neighborhood opposition is not something that is considered within the conditional use permit. Uh, here where there is no buffer zone violation and where other buffer zone violations are being approved within the city um, and on and on, uh, this is a very strong uh, contender for approval for the conditional use permit. The fact that it wasn't um, approved, uh, it then invites the look, uh, looking at other cases that were approved 
since these are similarly situated. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I will I will just uh, try to uh, be succinct um, that it is the Board of Appeals role to look at land use impacts and implications of um, these um, these cannabis establishments. We request that the applicant put all the details on hours of operation, um, size, security, and everything on the record for those who are participating in our meetings who have not had a chance to understand what the project is. So that is, that is the reason we spend so much time walking through this. Um, the and I and I'm actually I do have and I've read Holland Holland Brands versus uh, City of Z Boston Zoning Board of Appeals, and I do think there is a difference here, in that um, this clearly is a smaller establishment. Um, however, and 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 this is different from other projects that we've looked at. Because as we look at a project in a neighborhood context, um, 1937 Beacon Street, for example, there is a difference in that it is much more proximate to public transportation than Oak Square is. Um, and you know that also the difference is, yes, there may be parking being provided on site for, um, for this particular project. However, the, um, the, the issue might be that, in fact, those parking spaces may need to go to, for a handicapped person or most, most likely for staff. So, so there is just, you know, I think location is important and to understand um, that everything is kept in context. So that's why I'm taking the few minutes to kind of walk through from our perspective um, what the difference is on these projects. We are not, we are not arbitrary and capricious. Uh, we do look at it very closely and we, we clearly understand that cannabis is approved in the Commonwealth. <laughs> that's not something we use as our um, our yardstick at all. We just look at it from a zoning perspective um, as a land use a land use impact um, impact project. Um, so I've um, said enough. Is and is there anything else anybody would like to add? I would. I mean, are you asking me or members? No, of the no, board? no. I'd like to ask the board members. Thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Councillor. Um, I think you did a very good job um, and succinctly. Um, highlighting what's pertinent to this case. Anything else that the um, board members would like to add? Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Ruggiero. Yeah, I, I just, um, I, 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 I lean towards it, but the clarification from the court cases, I do lean towards it deserves reconsideration, particularly, you know, well, I'm if, going to be, if, I'm another, going to, if another if another if another business establishment non cannabis would go there, like I just don't see how we could say that that same establishment wouldn't cause similar traffic and flow issues. I think it I think it really would depend on what the the business was, you know, and and I do think there's a difference between the the Holland brand versus this one in that that property had uh, the parking. It, ha it was uh, surrounded by industrial and commercial uses on three sides, whereas this is just part of a strip of commercial use on Washington Street, Street but abutted by residential use. You know, so um, anyway. Uh, you know. So anyway, so uh, I hear you, um, Mr. Ruggiero. Um, any other comments? Okay, let's move to a vote whether to um, to reconsider this case and go to a full hearing for reconsideration or not. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to reconsider. 
I'll second that, Eric. Okay, all those in favor? We got a roll call. Roll I'm call. sorry, um, Fortune? Aye. Ruggiero? Aye. Oleg? Aye. Dong? Aye. Robinson? Aye. I vote in opposition to the reconsideration, but motion carries, so we will reconsider the case at a date to be determined. Thank, Thank you. you very much. May I ask all board members to stay on, and may I ask Mr. Hampton to stay on? Recording stopped. <clears throat>